Welcome. I like that at all. The tap of it. Tap Haven. Tap. 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 Ooh. Oh, <laughs> redoing the intro. Welcome to Tap Haven episode 18. Oh, I'm scared. Uh, well, it, it's, it's been a while on this one. How has the past three weeks been? Dude, a lot has happened. I know. Correct. Correct. I went to Fire on the Mountain. I saw Bigfoot. Wait, Fire on the Mountain? What is that? What's Wait, Bigfoot? Mountain? Yeah, no, Fire no, on the let's, Mountain. Let's, let's skip the Bigfoot part. Like, let's let's not even joke around with this. Let's not. <laughs> let's not do this. It's the I, first episode <laughs> back after a long break, and I don't need a story about how he ran into Oh, there's no story. Baby there's no story. Oh, there's no story. Sure? Okay. I went to the Bigfoot Festival, and I saw many Bigfoots. Okay. Many, okay. many Bigfoots. They were everywhere. There, there was... Just I've so never you seen saw so much Bigfoot. Bigfoots with mini feet, yeah. and they were called mini Bigfoots. No, <laughs> there were big feet everywhere, but there were also little Bigfoots, like on little tiny earrings. But it's a Bigfoot on a little earring, so I don't know. If it is a learn. It is a lesson in humility. A lesson uh, in humility. In the sense that I want to be good at something immediately. Mm, and yeah. it's, that's just not the case. Especially even if I've done it before. So like long story short, I'm writing curriculum for an AI course for high schoolers. And I haven't written lessons, like actual lessons, like uh, curriculum, yes. But lessons themselves, like the slides and the documents and everything. I haven't done that in years, so mm -hmm. I'm coming into it trying to relearn uh, the, the skills that I did have, and I'm also under a, uh, a bit of a tight schedule because I need to be, we need to be done writing by a certain point so we can get it out to a focus group so that we can go ahead and make the edits. And by the time we make the edits, it needs to be ready for it to be deployed and publicized for the school year. Mm. So I'm I'm battling the necessity to keep my work at my work and my home self at home and not letting those two things blend because I refuse to bring my work home, whether it is my my behave my manner mannerism or my mentality. Or actual work. Yeah. That's really hard to do when you're first starting a job, I feel. For too. sure. You can you can basically make it your identity and it's just never a good I've always, idea. I've always said that like yeah. the first three months on a new job, it's like that's the only thing you can do outside of uh trying to recover. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like try and hold it down, man. Because I'll yeah. tell you this right now, other than playing a, like a specific game in particular and uh, this job, I have been doing absolutely nothing. I really want to work on my cybersecurity thing. I really want to make pro progress with it, especially now seeing like what I'm dealing with and what I know that could possibly be coming down the pipeline if I continue in this position. But have you been on I, I got to I got to be patient with myself. You've been on Hack the Box. I have it's, not. It's what one of those resources box? on the um, pirate software Discord for you know learning yeah. hacking, and this one looks really cool. I've had it open because I want to do it myself, but it's like a gamified version of properly learning the stuff. I think everything's like free, but you have to complete like your dungeons basically in order to unlock the next dungeon of. Progression. progression yeah and i just say. think that's really cool yeah. like that's it, i mean ideally this is like where education will go eventually is if you gamify education for everyone then people can go at their own pace and some people will go really fast because they love certain subjects and whatnot and someday maybe yeah, I've heard some good things about Hack the, Hack the Box, too. It seems pretty interesting. Is it the... I, I should probably do the Academy, because I have very little to, like, if any, hacking skills. Well, I, I think this starts... Uh, from what I've heard, and I haven't looked into it probably as much as Anthony, from what I've heard, it starts pretty uh, basic. 
and then you work up over time. Yeah, I think so. So counting But I think if I, is... I might have... Okay. I'll give this a I try. I think, like Nat was saying, I think there's multiple options when you go to get started, most likely, because um, there's one that's there like, is. do you know programming? Is. When you're like, would you like to start here yeah. or there? Okay. But cool. yeah, it does seem pretty oh, legit. Gosh. Okay. Okay. You have my attention, yeah, my cool. friend. But yeah, I I I have to oh. <laughs> man. I still have to take a course that's like summarizing what I've been studying for like eight months. So this is all kind of happened at like the, both the worst and the best <laughs> time. Uh, because I was supposed to complete an, a course like months ago. Like I was supposed to uh, get a, take a test and get the certificate for said activity months ago. But life happened, and I I also had to like start looking for a job almost immediately because there was no way I could stay where I was. So long story short, that's happening. On top of uh, we had a Jericho, which. Um, if anybody knows about weather, it's a super system that extends across state lines. So we had a system that apparently extended from Texas over to Florida. Wow, dude, there was a there was yeah. a show called Jericho that I really loved. But um, dude, before we mm -hmm. move on, though, I, I wanted to bring up something I was going to bring up later, which is Hack Mud, which is a game that you might really enjoy. And it's oh, so it's really cool good, and it's like it's hacking it's a multi-user dungeon so it's text-based and you you will learn things you will learn scripting and other stuff but while having a lot of fun and engaging in a very intriguing story have you have you gotten i have yet? and i have i don't know if i've even left the lan the vlan yet because ash and i were working oh, on it together okay. she got tired i kept going and then I got to where you make a decision, and then I was like, oh, I don't want to make the decision yet. But then uh, after I woke up the next morning, I realized, oh, I should make this decision. No, I don't want to spoil anything. So I just did, but I can't remember how far I got. But it is very interesting. Um, there's a lot of puzzles, and it's just cool. It's really cool. It is a very fun. I, I played this back when it first came out in like 2016, 2017, yeah. somewhere around there. Um, it is one of those that I heavily recommend for people that just want to understand systems in yeah. general. I think um, the best way I can summarize it too is that, so you'll start the game and you'll be in a PVE situation. You'll be learning, you'll be in the tutorial. When you get out of the tutorial, you're now in an MMO and the game will put you as a like entity into random dungeons that other people may encounter you. And if they encounter you Ooh. and they try to hack into you, if they're able to break your defenses that you have installed on your system, they could steal all of your credits, all of your monies. But you can do the same yeah. thing. And so you will use certain <clears throat> tools, you'll go into certain dungeons basically, and when you're in that dungeon, you'll encounter like rooms. And these rooms might be created by the game. Most of them probably are. But the room could also be created by another player that wants you to go into their room and accidentally give them access to your stuff and they can even steal your money when you think you're trying to get money from someone so it's it's really neat and interesting you want to make money level up install your defenses you can like turtle basically like you'll get like certain statuses that'll be like assessing your system and it'll be like oh you have like all defenses you're obviously a turtle stuff like that so it is very cool and then i think there's like a 15 minute cooldown for when things reset so if someone's hacking into your system they can get back into you if they failed but if they're not able to you know every 15 minutes all of the puzzles reset like they they change so they can't just persistently try to push into your system for like an hour if that makes sense mm yeah that makes sense 
You are doing a thing <laughs> to my brain that is making it very hard to engage with the idea of even interacting with this game, which Sorry. is called oversharing. Sorry. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm just letting you know. That's my okay. My brain turned off. That's okay. Five minutes ago. That's okay. <laughs> For the audience, right? right. <laughs> But yeah, it's really cool, and I think oh, if you get man. it on, I, I put it on my wish list. I think if I you get it on, it on Humble list. Bundle, there might be a discount, or you just get to choose where your money goes for you know donations. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha yeah, that could be a fun way to learn a little bit right. by having fun by playing a game. For sure, I know. After this is CISSP, um, the goal is to go ahead and move into that, but. Um, we had a st system come through, knocked out all of our power. Um, it has knocked out multiple people's power. There is actually massive uh, power lines that are just completely down in like the general area of northeast Houston. So like, there's just areas where there's n just no power. Period. Like you can you can drive for ten miles around and there's nobody with power. Jeez, that's crazy. So. Um, we've had that for the past three days, and then also Mel is transitioning from studio to Yay. home studio, and the and the remodeling that goes along with that. So it's been either on pause or working with um, working with minimal electricity, and they just finished sanding the walls, but they didn't put up any sheets to go ahead and make sure the particulate particulate stay in one area. So there's dust all That's over. That's really us. annoying. Oof. So they're cleaning it right now, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a thing right now. We are going to persevere, though. I ha I have a feeling that my work is is probably canceled tomorrow, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I hope I'm working from home, so I can go ahead and help out. But that's what's been going on with me for the past three weeks: crushing work guilt, uh, no power wanting to uh, study for cybersecurity and uh, my wife becoming a stay-at-home worker. That'll be really good for her. Oh, for sure. Oh, my God. The overhead's completely oh. gone in terms of rent. I'm just hoping that a lot of her uh, clientele... And you should uh, be able sticks. to do something with your taxes on that. Taxes, yes. We just have to be very quiet about our insurance company. So, uh, yeah, if you're... Listening insurance company, nothing's nothing's crazy. We're we're fine. We're fine. Oh my gosh. Oh, so I had a, a random question. Nice. Um oh. yeah, how shoot. do infinity bottle? Is that just where so I've finally got a real decanter and I expect that the infinity oh. bottle that you've told me about is the best use of it? Um Dude, yes. If you uh, audience go find a beautiful decanter. Make sure that the seal is good. Well, it has to be like decanter. silicon, right? If it's just a cork or something, it might not be enough. Yeah. Or no, if it's glass. Yeah, it needs... When you have like an all glass decanter, it's not actually going to stop things from evaporating because it's just, there's holes. <laughs> and it'll let oxygen right. in, right? And you want a good decanter. Mm. Look up what that means. Go find yourself a nice decanter. And Thanks. you can create the wonderful experience that is an infinity bottle. Oh, go and find yourself As a nice the name decanter. implies, essentially, as you drink your fine spirits, you get to the end of them, you kind of drink a bunch, or you find something you particularly like, you add it to your infinity bottle. And over time, you try to cater what flavor profiles you want to add to your infinity bottle. Hmm. Always adding, drinking some of it, adding some more, drinking from it, adding a new <laughs> one, buying a new... And at the end of the day, you have a unique blended whiskey that no one else on the planet has that is specifically tailored to the flavor profiles that you like and enjoy. So I actually started doing it maybe a but little yes. differently, and I might continue. Uh, I picked something up from watching another whiskey YouTuber that Eric shared the other day. And whenever they do a tasting, they will at the end pour a drop back into the bottle because there's enough that was stuck to the glass, I guess, that it forms 
a little bit to pour out, but not enough to taste really. Well, before throwing out my mm. empty bottles, I realized same thing. There's a little bit of bourbon at the bottom. Not enough to drink really, but enough Quite to pour enough to into my infinity bottle. So I've just been like pouring a little bit, but I, I might start doing what you were just saying and pour more because there's still not really much in there. It's going to it take, would take way too long. Even. Yeah. <laughs> the the way that I like to do it is I, 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 I call this priming for me. I don't know if there's a, a accepted Take term, term for this yeah. for at least in the bourbon world. But I primed my infinity bottle by initially blending uh, a an American bourbon with a Nika coffee still single malt. Essentially. It was, I picked a percentage, I did it in a little bottle, and I was like, oh, I'm going to pour uh, one ounce of this and two, one ounce of this and see how it tastes. Like blending 50-50, is that good? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I got a little bit too much of the Nika, or I got a little bit too much of the bourbon. And so then I'd be like, okay, let me pour another glass. Let me do 0.5 ounces and one ounce, two to one ratio. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Now I or half of my bottle of the American bourbon and a little bit less of that of the Nika and I create my starter. A bourbon that is complex, good, nice, a little hot, hmm. but has some of that shortbready nature of the unmalted barley that That's they use like. in the Nika. Mm -hmm. And it created a wonderful little blend. And then when I find something and I'm like, oh man, that tastes good in my infinity bottle. I pour a little bit of that in. Now, I would say while pouring a little bit each time the end of the bourbon isn't a bad thing to do, especially it's not change the flavor much, if it right? still tastes it's pretty good. So small. Yeah, it won't change the flavor to too much. That precious bourbon. Yeah. Precious That's fair. Bourbon. The only thing that I would say is that sometimes you'll get more flavor in a newly opened bottle because it hasn't it hasn't yeah. oxygenated yet, oxidized yet. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have different flavors at the end of the bottle than the beginning because of that oxidation. Yes. And that may or may not be a good or bad thing. Again, may be negligible for some cases too. It takes a long time to oxidize. Uh, whiskeys enough to where it makes a difference. They did a test on the whiskey tribe of like some that had been open for That's who it was. Uh, two years, four years or something like that. And there was little to no flavor change in open bottles until you had more of the Oxygen. bottle being air than liquid. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah. Hard to say. But yes, heavily recommend an infinite. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and prime it, fill it up with a bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah, prime it. Yeah, prime yeah, man. It. Yeah, it's prime so good. Lord. Um, let's see. My my past few weeks have been crazy. So for for anybody, we're we're almost caught up to where we are. These episodes will now pretty much be close <laughs> to live now, uh, and that's mostly my fault. Um. I have been sick for a while, which has led to not being able to do a lot of the podcast. Not, which not he been told able to do no a lot of one, by the way, which he told no not one. Not till he was almost <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. He was I, like, I'm, I'm better now. Not till I was almost okay. Yes, <laughs> it was better now. Um, feeling great now, so it's it's been good. But I, yeah. I have done a few things. I would say the most interesting story that I have. So... One of our family members, my wife's cousin, just graduated from med school. We went to their graduation, which was in uh, uh, Alabama. Oof. And we went there two weeks, uh, a w the last weekend. So not the one that just happened, but the one right before that. And for anybody living in Alabama, they would know <laughs> that weekend was terrible for weather. So we get there. Late at night, we got off work, we drove straight there. It's a few hours drive. 
And we get there and it's probably like 10 p.m. I'm still sick at this point, so I'm like coughing up a storm. I'm like, uh, not feeling great. I'm like, okay. We settle into the hotel room. My wife goes down, spends some time with her family, but I was still working that night, so I worked a little bit. And we get to sleep at like 11 p.m. And we have to wake up pretty early because we have all the graduation stuff in the morning. Now, I forgot like everything for this trip. Being sick is not conducive to remembering shit you need to bring for a trip. For sure. So, we, it, of course, this is a med school graduation. Everybody's like looking nice. You're supposed to dress nice. Our, her cousin wants to do, you know, outings with nice dress. I have like half of the dress clothes that I need. Oh, no. I'm like missing belts. I'm missing did you, you know, uh, shoes Did you check entirely. the bottom of your bag? I, this time there was no bag. I checked uh, nothing. I was out of commission this time. Truly unfortunate. So now we have to wake up even earlier because I have to go buy all this nonsense. And so we're like, okay, we got to wake up pretty early in the morning. So we set our alarms and we go to bed. At around 3.45 a.m., oh, Sweet. Are both me and my wife's phones go off. Medical emergency. Oh, no. And I'm like, that's that's weird. And so I thinking it's like an Amber Alert type of thing. I'm like, we haven't seen anybody. We haven't gone outside, you know? We go, we turn over, I press the button, I'm like laying back in bed. And then there's a new sound that I haven't heard in quite a while. And the the it sounds like metal yelling at me and i am so metal confused yelling at you i wake up to what i can only imagine is a city like alarm. an air raid siren yes it Ooh. sounded like an air raid type of sign now i'm like what the what is going on and then i check my phone and it's like tornado warning and i'm like <laughs> Wait, is watch the bad one or is warning the bad one? Nobody knows. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? It's just L bad all over, my guy. <laughs> lo, and, lo and behold, a tornado had just touched down when our phones went off, like half a mile south of us. My dude. And so we, my I open dude. up the curtains and like the trees are like this way. And I'm like, ooh. This, let me check where this shit is. I'm like, My now dude. now I'm trying to figure out, do we need to, like, what are we doing? Are we getting into the hallway? Like, what's happening now? <laughs> what's and, actually happening here? <laughs> yes. Luckily, while we were in the area that it could have gone, if it had moved northward, the winds and stuff blew it mostly straight east, which ended up okay. missing us. Okay. Nothing happened. It was just we missed a lot of sleep and had to wake up and then we had to wake up early and it ended up. Uh, we go to breakfast. And now we're having breakfast with all of our family. We go and we're like, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we had to wake up early because of the stupid alarm going off. And every other person at the table said, what alarm? <laughs> I was like, you motherfuckers just slept through that shit. Yeah. And they they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear any alarm. That's impressive yeah. because Eric and Bonvia yeah. can sleep through some serious alarms. Yes, because oh, yeah. it wakes me up every time. I, th I <laughs> and they just, wow. To be fair, I wow. think it's, it's just one of those things where my, I feel like my brain does too good a job at separating important from non-important. It's like, do we need this to like survive? Yeah, right yeah. now. Because here's the thing: in the case where this alarm went off, I was up. Like, mm -hmm. I was up. If we had to escape said building and go somewhere, I was ready to go. Under penalty of death yeah. is how your Easy. brain operates. Easy. Got it. But not even that. If, for example, if somebody were to say, "Hey, I need you here." At 6 a.m. 
tomorrow morning and it's like 2.15 a.m., I don't have to set an alarm. I'm I'm waking up wow. at 5 a.m. and I'm getting there at 6 a.m. Wow. We're, like, I, so many times we have a tournament or we got to catch a plane, something like that. I set an alarm to give myself an hour and a half of leeway before I need to be there. And I'll wake up well before that hour and a half alarm goes off. Like, no problem. And I'm just like, up. Uh. But if it's something where I'm like, oh, this is an everyday event. This is something where, you know, I should be there, but like, I don't really have to be there. If there is any doubt in my mind that it is not important or at least not like life endangering important or like something that's a one time event type of deal, I can sleep through any alarm mm. to get me there. Speaking of life endangering mm. events, mm. what are we drinking today? Let's oh, yeah. get it. Let's go. So, we missed a few weeks. We decided we'd just shotgun uh, <laughs> 15 oh whiskeys in this episode. Please, please don't. <laughs> please don't. No. So, we decided for once to actually try and do the traditional Flaviar tasting experience as it was designed to do. So, we have a suite of three whiskeys that we are going to try all from east asia and so these should be relatively interesting whiskeys hmm. now i do know just from remembering the um the the box in general and because it says it on the little bottles we have two japanese whiskeys here and one Indian whiskey. Yeah. Mm. And so I think this will be really interesting. I traditionally love Japanese whiskeys, Nika being one of my favorite, as we discussed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. earlier in this episode. But I have not had an Indian whiskey yet. Now, there are some whiskeys from India that are finally starting to be distributed to the States. This is one of them, but I know there's a new one. I think it's called Indra, which just got released at my local liquor store, and I've been meaning to go uh, buy that whiskey. Injury, not Indra, Injury. Now, Injury has been heavily recommended to me, to me by, by some family and friends, and it's pretty affordable. That, I would argue, is probably one you'll see in the podcast sooner rather than later i've been wanting to try that one for a while mm -hmm. and so we are going to go through and try these three whiskeys and we're going to do a pseudo taste test blind taste test although we will know which ones are don't know what which. to expect we don't really have a lot of information yeah we don't expect anything of these whiskeys really so it'll be interesting to go through and try all of these and compare them. Now, in a true if taste, I taste test these, experience. and at the end of it, I don't feel like going for a Naruto run. I think they have failed. Uh, <laughs> Enough. Now we do have the proof, <laughs> so I will say I think all of these are like forty-five percent. So we're looking at eighty proofish. On oh, all one of them's at forty. These are so not we got slouches. forty-five, forty-six, and forty. So one's a little okay. lower, but basically in the same ballpark. So mm -hmm. I sh I expect to th be able to taste a lot because usually the lower APV, the easier it is for them to let it shine through. Mm. So how do we want to do this? Because yeah, I know so... the back of our cards show what they might taste like and smell like. Do we want to avoid looking I, at that I... for the first sip? Yeah, I think avoid looking at the back of the card first. Okay. And okay. we go through and we try all of them, give some initial thoughts. Then we go back through, but we turn the card over and see what we should be yeah. looking for. Okay. And then we'll go through and give our final tasting notes and price expectancy and rating. So are we just doing okay. like <clears throat> okay. a, one sip each or are we doing a primer thing? How, how I'm gonna do a full like primer. We have a pretty good pour on all of these, I True. think. So I'm gonna 
I'm gonna go through and do at least True. three good sips, I think, before I flip a card on all of these and maybe go back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna Ooh. start with A, which the A is the Oi forty five. Oi, Oi, Oi. Don't, don't, don't. Oi, Oi. And this is a. Uwai, uwai. <laughs> This is a so Japanese much. whiskey, as Anthony <laughs> ooze himself out of the, out of the YouTube <laughs> space. Smells pretty good. Ooh, yeah, it does smell pretty good. It's very subtle. It's got like a honey note to it. Might have picked up some charcoal or something. But it's not bad at all. Yeah, maybe a little bit of smokiness, but I, I get like a, a, a honey and wood. Yeah, I get the lightest mm -hmm. bit of smoke. Oh. By the way, welcome back. Cheers. 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 Before we drink, I was the one to remember this time. Yeah, I, I messed up. Whatever. Shut up. Hmm. So it has like a darker sweetness to it on the palette from the initial... Palette soak. I think it's bright. Honestly. It is a little bit bright. Well, I could see it was like dark while chewing I, it, and then after I swallowed it became bright. It was like yeah. boom. Um interesting. Is there honey in this? Yeah, I get like a sweetness. I almost get a little bit of I get almost an oak. Definitely mixed wood. with a yeah, there's a good bit of wood on the yeah on the mouthing. Definitely woody, but I also get bubblegum hints almost. What? Like if you chewed a it, it, like at the tail end of chewing your bubblegum, the little bit of sweetness with oak. Okay, Nat's Nat's getting it. He's it's like that. that it's that sickly sweet uh, double bubble. Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Vibe. It has that gum syrup, gummy, yeah, type of flavor going on. Interesting. Hmm. Might be able to see that, hmm. but barely. There's a lot of uh, bitterness for me. There is a lot, fair amount of bitterness on yeah. this, just in general. There is some bitterness. I taste some of that almost clove spiciness, like clove mm -hmm. and black pepper with De wood. Definitely the black pepper. Uh, not as spicy as I thought it was going to be with the amount of bitterness that you have at the tail end. You would think it would be a little bit hotter in the fr yeah. up front. I think you get that more from a rye than you would from something like this. But yeah. Um... How many sips of this do we take before we move on to the two. next ones? Because I, mean, like, I, I, I was I, I just picked up my um, the B, mm -hmm. which is our Indian single malt. Ooh, that's whiskey. spice. That's spicy all the way down. Did you already try that one? No, 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 no. The uh, the oh, um, the, the one the that we just tried. I drank, I just drank water to wash it Holy down. Holy crap! This went it like left. This was Whoa. a totally different flavor. What is Holy this? Crap. This what is, is a cool this? smell. Wow. Yeah, it smells great. Hmm. This is a Hold totally on. different smell though. I gotta I gotta reassess the, the nosing here. I'm not so sure if I Hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it uh, is like great or not or pleasant. whether I like it, but at the same time, it is so different from most other things that I've smelled. It doesn't smell peaty, but it smells smoky. I can smoky. really smell the mash, I feel like. <clears throat> yeah, it has a grainy smell to it, but almost like a yeah, wheat. It, it smells like, like faintly like what it what, when we were at uh, the Four Roses distillery or when we went to Michter's and you're above the yeah. fermenting mash. Yeah. It's like a sweet... Herbal, grassy. I really like that. Nose. That that is probably one of the most unique noses I've ever had. Same. 
Oh, I can agree with okay. that 100%. Even right. if you don't like the nosing experience on this, it is particularly I really like it, unique. too, though. It's unique, and I like it. You know what I get? Mm. I almost get, like, a woody, fresh-cut grass type of smell. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Excuse me. I can't tell whether you like it or not, Nat. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm being open to the experience. I'm taking it slow. Because your face looks like mine. <laughs> it has, well, I'll tell you why. This immediately, like in my head, like I got like a grease monkey picture yeah. of this guy working on cars yeah it has a like undertones of oil grease and petrol, petrol in it with but it's sweet and it isn't it immediately reminds me of those ideas but it doesn't taste like those mm -hmm. it it's sweeter it's oaky it's like got a lot of wood character to it. And I can really smell the petrol. It doesn't now. taste bad, but it's You really need to slow down with that. You cannot so take that fast. When I Yeah, that's so interesting. Slow when it I, slow it down. And it's when I chewed it, it, it evolved during the chew. The flavor changed. Same. Because of mm -hmm. taking my time with it, like you were saying. But it is kind of weird now that I'm a little disappointed that the smell is evolved. Which I guess is okay, but it's almost like you get that smell in the beginning, it smells neat and amazing, and now it's mostly petrol. That petrol, yeah. Yeah, that's what it I, has, I feel like that's what I was catching at the very top of the very in, beginning. I was like, this yeah, is it has a distinct petrol oil smell. You know, mm -hmm. I'm tempted to wait and, until the smell goes back to take my second sip. You should really slow everything with this whiskey down. Slow everything down. Because if you go too fast, all you get it's is... It's coming petrol. back, yeah. The, the, the good smell's coming you have, back. You have to, like... But doing this and then doing it one time, you're not going to get it. You have to s breathe in slow and then pull for long periods of time for the petrol to, like, kind of, like scoop into the other nuances of the of the um I, I get a, nose. I get hints of floralness too on the nose that kind of shine through. The sweetness on this is very different from a sweetness of a bourbon or a an Irish whiskey or something like that. It's less desserty sweet and it's more floral you know, sweet. I wasn't getting the sweetness mm. until just now, and I changed, I was messing with how I was smelling it, like the heights and stuff, and I got it when I had my mm -hmm. mouth open with the, my bottom lip touching the bottom of the glass and my nose close to it. That's the only time I was able to smell sweetness, like this. And I really get the sweetness there, which is, That's isn't wild. it? This is a very complex yeah. one. So. It's very interesting. This, this is so a it, weird onion, y'all. It is weird. It starts out... If you've ever had... For me, this is kind of how the experience is going. So you smell it. It has this floral sweetness lining this very thick, greasy, petrol type mm -hmm. of smell. But it's not the overwhelming, painful smell that you may smell at a gas station or something like it's that. It's just the character. It's just the character of that. It, maybe a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of just oil in general, like a cooking oil type of deal. And then when you, when you taste it, if you've ever had those edible arrangements that they use on like nice food sometimes that are like the purple flowers... This I get it. that sort of sweetness right up front that evolves into this oily grease slash petrol smokiness that kind of fills the flavor palette over time. 
which is very interesting. It's it's a it's a interesting whiskey. Okay. So, okay, next one because I'm gonna just keep on sniffing that one because I want to figure out what the heck's going on. Yeah. Okay, next one. I'm gonna cleanse my palate. On the last huh. one, I also got the oily, greasy stuff, but I feel that that can be very um, texturally, like, enjoyable. Like, it wasn't just, it was yeah, like a, I, I a feeling, it was a smoothness of sort. Yeah. Yeah, it does have that feeling. This, is giving, this is giving me sake vibes. Oh. oh, wow. This one is... That is so sweet. That's like yeah, peach or this? pear this is, or something. This is a blended Akashi. Yeah, it's got a... This does smell a lot like a sake. It's so sweet. Like I'm, getting a, I'm getting a lot of wine off the top of that. Yeah. Well, this has that bad. typical just... rice wine almost mm -hmm. sourness. Yep. But it's behind this very sweet, fruity character like pear, peach, that type of deal mm -hmm. up front. Okay. I would say this smells more like a sake to me than it does, that does a, a whiskey. bourbon or a whiskey, yeah. I get a little bit of a darker sweetness, but it's mostly fruity. Maybe a cherry? Dude, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. That's just very subtle. It's very sweet. It is very sweet. And it's gone. Yeah, it's very subtle. It is here for two seconds. There's like a little bit of like light burn at the end, but no. it's almost the burn of oh. a an apple type of deal. Mm, okay, yeah. I get almost no wood off what so like I get I do get wood off it but everything is muted. Like as soon yeah, as it like, feels I got very, nothing. It feels like there's a mute. Like yeah. if you were playing trumpet it feels like a muted trumpet. All the flavors are there but they all kind of like stop. This is the type of whiskey that if I had a friend that doesn't drink straight spirits. They're like, no, bourbon, whiskey, it's way too harsh. It's 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 just, it burns too much. I like a yeah, wine. Yeah, if they like wine, I'd be like, okay, no, you got to try this. I think you will this. like this. It will not yeah. burn you. You're going to be fine. I think a beginner could enjoy it. It's really weird, though. In a lot of ways, this tastes closer to a subtle brandy than it does a whiskey in a lot of ways i haven't had a brandy in a while to compare but i have to assume that you're right that is it's very interesting yeah that is like so, that's a crossbreed between like a wine and a whiskey yeah it's very weird and so this is by the way i forgot to tell everyone this is a blended japanese whiskey blended with what we don't know yet. We're gonna have to look all okay. this up and figure figure some of this out. Okay, because that I, this is a I blended Japanese whiskey, and it's this is the one that is forty percent ABV. So this is only eighty proof, which, by the way, makes a lot of sense that this is the lowest yeah. ABV yeah. because it is so subtle and super chill. Yeah, super chill. There's nothing chill. inherently bad about it. Uh -huh. But it's not complex. It's one note. And it's very subtle. It's very light. Almost refreshing in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. I was going to say, like, most like, of the time, like, I don't drink things to, like, cleanse my palate. I feel like that cleansed my palate of the other two bur the other two whiskeys more than anything. This is one where I would love to have a chilled glass. Oh, yeah. Of this on For a sure. hot day. In a tea? This would be a great summer whiskey. Oh, yeah. I could put that in, like, a tea or something and be uh -huh. good. Like like some kind of, like, iced tea. Yeah. Okay. Just this cold would be so refreshing. It's so bright. Mm -hmm. and All right. 
It's got like floral and fruity notes. You know what he gets to do now? We get to flip them over and then we can do the combo moves where you don't cleanse your palate in between. And you see how they potentially oh, like yeah. complement <laughs> each other. Yeah. It's like a combo. Okay. So let's see. On the first one, we have the Mars OI 45, a Japanese whiskey, <gasps> 45% ABV. Oh. Now they're saying that we should be getting what? Some strawberry, toffee, sweet, stewed fruits, air, caramel, milk, butterscotch, milk. and milk chocolate. And I could see a lot of this. I think the milk oh. chocolate and butterscotch I may have been attributing to that darker sweetness. Mm -hmm. I can get the milk chocolate. I don't think that comes through. I want to find the strawberry. Ooh. That's like my favorite fruit, man. I don't, I don't get the strawberry, but you know, you know what I do get off of this? A milk bread Guys, on the nose. What is a stewed fruit? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. A stewed, a stewed it's on the fruit? List. fruit? I like, have to imagine it's just a boiled. I would fruit, hope so, because right? like, but what does that even mean? Is it all one? Is it all one no, word? No, it's two words: stewed fruit. It says a fruit that's been stewed. Yeah. You just place it in a pan and hmm. stew it. That's all it is. Yeah. 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 Hmm. What do you? What do you like? But yeah, I you get. Baby? I get like subtly sweet vanilla Shit. milk bread on the nose now for this. Why one. do I feel like this one tastes better than milk it did before? Bread. It does. What's going on? You are absolutely right. It does strawberry and toffee. I definitely, well, I definitely get toffee. Definitely get milk. Yeah, this one changed a lot. Since oh, we no. went back, once we went past it, yeah. Yeah. Now, that is probably a combination of things. So, there are two contributing factors to an alcohol changing its flavor quickly during a tasting. Hmm. The first is that alcohol evaporates pretty quickly. So letting a glass sit, the alcohol in it will start to evaporate. The second attributing factor is that your taste buds rapidly change. So from going from A to B to C and then back to A, we have had some harsh occurrences to our taste buds which have manipulated them into perceiving more or less of the five different types of flavors mm -hmm. that you can taste right so everybody can taste salty sweet umami um what are what are the last two um salty sweet umami sour 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 and bitter better so each one of those receptors adjust to what they experience in like five to 10 seconds mm -hmm. on average. So we had a pretty bitter umami flavor in like the second one. And now we're coming back to this one and we're probably tasting less bitterness and less umami from that other experience. And that's bringing out a lot of this sweetness that I don't know if I perceived as much in that. Well, this first is just like when you. Same. This is like when you need yeah. a sommelier, basically, to say like, "Ooh, you'll really like this one, but we have to let it breathe. It Do has to X breathe, right? Or like, y or don't go straight yeah. for it. You got to wait like five minutes until you taste it or something like that." Yeah, it's a so and different. Coming back to this one, it's so different, and I get a lot of that butterscotch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like I get a lot of butterscotch on this one. Which is really cool. Alright, gotta save some of that in case it's the favorite at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm i I'm still saving some oh my on the God. final tasting notes. The so nose on it is commit. so much better now. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. I haven't nosed it. Let oh me my tell God, the no, put it in your nose, Eric, experience. before it's too late. Smell it now. Oh man. It's so good. It's different, right? I don't know that I'm no, getting. I, it it just changed it's back to the same. I mean, maybe it's because I nosed it shortly after tasting the Mars. 
Okay. You may have blended the Maybe. two, my guy. So we have, according to them, we should be getting warm. I know, right? I don't know what that means. They just warm. put warm. Oh, you know what? Like, I know what it not, means. I'm not shitting you. I know you. what it means. There's a little thing right there. I got there. it. That's no, I got warm. it. It's kind of like a warm apple pie. You can smell it. It's just freshly baked. And you know that that's going to be nice and cozy. Absolutely not. These yeah, guys don't know uh, what good apple pie is. <laughs> Do y'all see how much fruit oh, is on man. here? So we should be, yeah, it, we're supposed to be getting a lot of fruit, some spiciness, which I could see. I could see some spiciness. Oak, which I get. I get a little bit of that oak. We got vanilla, caramel, raisin, dark chocolate, nutty. And I'm really surprised warm. that they put nutty instead of and something like, you know, wheat or grass or corn. Yeah, it, it definitely has a more grassy note to it then i mean maybe it could be like roasted chestnuts i could see that working from home yay let's go all right what game are we gonna play nice <laughs> hades too but we'll talk about that at the end of this episode god the nose on this is just still so yeah, good this one this one did not change a lot for me it, like the y45 did Mm -hmm. This one got less harsh for me. It did get a little less harsh, but I still taste the outline of what I perceived earlier. Mm -hmm. It's got an oiliness to it. It's got it's spicy as all. Some get of that out, petrol. Dude. It does have a little bit of spice. I I still get some of that clove, mm -hmm. black pepper. I think that reason the reason why uh, I think the reason why. Uh, this is so different is because they put the spices and the cloves so far forward in the flavor palette. Yeah. I think they shaped how this thing was actually going to be per perceived. I feel like the, 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 what do they, what they have the vanilla and the caramel sits as the back end, not the front end of the um, flavor experience. I don't know how they thought that, but they got it. That, at least that's what I'm getting from this. It's 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 really special in my opinion. You know the petrol like flavor is gone for me this second time around, but the smell is there, very there. After the taste, mm -hmm. the smell is there, which is a wild thing. Very impressive. Yeah, I still. Yeah, this one. This one didn't change a lot for me. I'm trying to think about it and like go back and forth with it, but it really does seem to be almost exactly the same experience that I had, but a little bit more mellow. I, for me I, I, I agree that it is more mellow, and I think it's actually okay that it hasn't changed much, right? Because it's almost like, oh, this one... Well, you know, the thing is, we might have let it age a little bit longer. We let it breathe longer because it was second. Yeah. We went straight in on A. So maybe it was different right off the bat. We wouldn't really know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. This oh. this mode of digesting liquor is just different, you know? There's just some things that we have to be ready for. It's Throwing us for a loop. <laughs> Are we going to try this Let's last go. one before we, like, start yeah. shooting these? So this is the Akashi. Ooh, what is that? And now, on this one, they're actually saying that we should be getting a lot of honey, which mm -hmm. totally Guys, hold on. on the first hold on. one. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Apricot. 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 Was before I forget. That was it. Dude. 100% I see Dude, that. Dude, I smell paper mache it. in the art class. Paper mache? I think so. You know, like, in when you have to class. put the newspaper into that mixture so that you can make the newspaper harden yeah yeah it's there. dude isn't that I crazy it. yeah i got that yeah i pull i had to pull really hard don't yeah, pull, don't pull it that. hard don't pull hard yeah 100 percent. i i get what you're for sure talking about for sure dude. i think that's from that yeah. peatiness and you're mixed with elevated. a sweetness and for lightness sure. but definitely those things like <laughs> Now that apricot, I know it's apricot was it? Apricot, yeah. citrus, fruit with honey. 
I think we 100% nailed that on the, the first go round. We knew it was fruity a somehow. little bit of that woody smokiness at the end that's very subtle. Hmm. You know, I have no idea how to. Sp and on the second go round, that one is even more subtle for me. I really just get raisins and apricot brandy. It still comes to my mind. I will say that paper mache smell is probably more relatable for most people, mm. but I still get like sake on the nose. For sure. For me. The first thing that I catch. Is yeah, sake. I do. I do have to say I catch is we yeah. say paper mache, but it's not like it's not like it smells like a crayon or something weird that you can't eat. It's like you're a kid. You smell it. You're like, ooh, could I, yeah. could I drink that? That smells kind of good. You know, not. It's not like yeah. chemically or whatever. Even the mouthfeel is reminiscent of of uh, sake. Guys, we need to warm yeah. this. It's like it's super it's super watery. We need like, to warm this. There's not yeah. really a lot of viscosity to it. It's like super smooth. Yeah, so uh, interestingly enough, just to kind of talk about this, I'm going back to this middle one. I just looked them up. So the Kemet single malt whiskey is a product it's a double distillation similar to the new york whiskey that we tried they okay. use copper pot stills and okay. then they blend them together okay and they're taking that from a wine influence of this double st oh, distillation wine influence. okay they use barley grown in the foothills of the himalayas and it is aged in a combination of ex bourbon, uh, American oak barrels, ex wine, French oak barrels, and ex sherry casks. The Pedro Zimenez and Olorosa sherry barrels, by the way, which we have tried whiskey from both hmm. uh, Pedro Zimenez and Olorosa sherry casks. It is non chilled, uh, fil non chill filtered, which is just a very popular thing to do now and yeah it, it's super interesting i would say for me at least this was this is the most interesting even if it might not be my favorite really? of these three it is a very interesting All right, wait list. before we get into favorites and stuff do you guys have like do you know what you're gonna say what's your favorite and whatnot like i wrote mine down so i mine won't change yeah okay okay yeah, mine will not change either. I think, I, I, yeah, I I know what mine are going to be. I like their bottle, but it the is cool, cool. But, dude, Nat, I can't wait for you to see the, uh, what is it? The Quest's End Bottles? Oh, dude, my God. Dude, when, when the three of us that are, like, stoked. you know, distillery owners and we're shipping our own bottles, yeah, yeah we're going all out. We got to make bottles that are this cool, dude. They're so <laughs> cool looking. Oh, man. Like, cause this one, this bottle, we like it, right? But I think it's mostly the label. It's a very normal bottle. It's mostly the label. Yes. But, I um, man, you can get some fancy looking bottles. It's, especially when you want to make them feel like they're from a video game or from like some sort of fantasy. Yeah. Ooh. And so going back to this OI-45, which is also very interesting. This is done in the Nagano Alps, which is Japan's highest elevation distillery. Huh. They have one in the humid coast in the south as well, but they do most of their stuff in the Nagano Alps. This is one of the popular Japanese whiskeys coming out of Japan. It is very, very popular. This is done in X bourbon barrels. And it's got a high corn and malted barley mash bill. They have actually tried to have a strong imparting of a mint and menthol flavors to make this a more refreshing whiskey. Mint? I am not going to be able to share the screen on this one. It will so, not work. So. 
in in this one. So so oh, I want you to sorry, smell what are we in for? the Y45. This oh, is A. The, oh, the A. No, what are we looking for in yes, it? A. Oh, I thought you were saying C. I was like, no, no, no. We're so. looking for mint and menthol. In the A. In the A. This is the last of my A. I can see what they're going mint for. Mint and there. menthol? Yeah, it's very subtle. It's very light. No, nope. doesn't want to share, dude. It's like, let it go. You know, I'm not a smoker, so I don't know the, what menthol is. <laughs> menthol is like um, mint. Oh, it's uh, mint. Essentially. It's a little bit different. Yeah. If you've ever had the candied menthol, like the menthol candies. It's the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. But a mintiness, like light, refreshing, I kind of see that. Yeah, I would not have noticed that if you didn't mention it, but now I do feel the mintiness. Yeah, there's like something there that's making it a little bit more... It's actually really strong to me now. Minty. Especially after you said like if you just had a mint, I feel like I just had a mint. But not in a mm. not in a too strong okay. way. Not like I actually had a mint. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Hmm. Now, for our last one, this is the Akashi uh, blended whiskey, which I'm gonna pull up because I'm I'm curious about this one. I don't uh, know if they have a website. Let's see. The Akashi Mese. This, hmm. oh, Akashi, uh, Akashi Mese means, apparently means celebrity in Japanese. Hmm. It is a limited version of blended whiskey done by the White Oak Distillery. Now, I haven't heard of the White Oak Distillery. Japan itself doesn't actually have a lot of distilleries. And so I am interested to know, oh, the White Oak Distillery apparently is the oldest distillery in Japan. Founded, huh. founded in 1888. Um, they were apparently the first distillery four years before Suntory's Yamazaki what? Um, distillery. Four years, okay. Yeah, they, they beat them to the license by four years. Traditionally, they were sake brewers. They amazingly made no whiskey until 40 years later. Now, this Akashi is their introductory expression. It is the best value of Japanese whiskey on the market. It is 70% corn and 30% malted barley. It is slightly peated aged for at least three years in used bourbon barrels. Then it is finished in sherry casks. Likely Olorosa, but this, of course, doesn't say which ones. While it is bourbon-like initially with caramel corn and coconut shell aromas, the savory sherry notes bring forward that little bit of smoky peat. Now, I 100%, everything makes sense now about this whiskey the fact that it is sherry forward, I, I get the sherry, I get that sweetness, I get this light brandy expression. It is very subtle. And mm -hmm. the little bit of peatiness at the end is where that smokiness is coming at the end. But I mean, it is very subtle. Oh. I am a fan of all of these. No, no, <laughs> no, sir. It will take more than six. Uh, what is it? I guess this would be each one was like a double shot of whiskey. Um, so each of these are 300 milliliters. 300 milliliters. Okay. So or no, 50 milliliters. I'm sorry. Wow. Not 300 milliliters. That's like half That's a like, bottle. That was a lot. I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. Somebody is actually sloshed. Yeah, apparently. So this is a little bit more, almost a double, right? Almost a double. Okay. But no, it's going to take more than six shots of whiskey for me to feel like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I am, I am interested. So, since Anthony already has his written down. Uh huh. Nat, what? Y- yeah. Uh, go, uh, go. Take me through the journey of your experience. What would you rate these? What? How do you feel about them? What's your experience here? Okay, so um, we'll start from the third and go up to the first. Um, so my third place is the uh, Akashi blended. Only because when I was sipping through it, I was like, I I was looking for a bit more of a grounded uh, experience. I love the apricot vibe of the... Sorry, the apricot taste of the general spirit i just don't feel like anything else exists within the flavor palette after a fraction of a second because after that it's just it's it's a flavored beverage that's reminiscent of rice wine and i've never been a big fan of rice wine myself so totally understandable that this isn't my cup of tea so uh akashi third place so you don't really like sake What about like? Have you had like hot sake? Okay. Yes. It's okay. It's like juice. oh, interesting. Yeah, for me, the one that I like is yeah. mostly feeling. There's not much like flavor. It's just a, a feeling. Mm, maybe it. Maybe it's um, that I haven't had a really good sake before. I have a feeling I haven't had good sake. Because most of the time that I do have sake, I've, I've maybe spent like five six dollars for it to show up at my table mm, so okay very doubtful that i've had anything that's like reminiscent of actual yeah. sake and i the amount of times i've been to japan i probably should have had quite quality yeah, sake that that. I, i've done so many nice omakases mm-hmm. and funnily enough i've had uh, probably i've had nicer sakes than any nice wine for sure for sure in my life but some of the sakes i've had are very diverse in their experience mm-hmm. um so yeah they're they're interesting i'd love to dive more i am definitely a i get the nice i i usually ask the omakase like a lot of the omakases that i do they offer for some additional amount of money Mm-hmm. The chef prepares we'll yeah. pairings yeah. for you. What is an omakase for those like me who or forget slash don't know what it is? I think I remember. It's a an chef. omakase is a tailored menu yeah. for. I think omakase means that it's generally tailored a tailored experience overall, mm-hmm. and just kind of like a coursed meal in Japan. Yeah, I'm not sure whether or not that only applies to certain cuisines in america you mostly find it in regards to sushi in particular Mm -hmm. but i i actually don't know if it's applies to other cuisines as well and it's more about the tailored experience versus a non-tailored one i think it's the tailored experience of the side of the uh of the of the sushi yeah yeah that's how the most of the time when i've had it it is an omakase. Oh, omakase. so let's see. Omakase is a Japanese phrase used when ordering food in restaurants that means I'll entrust it oh, okay, to you. Cool. Yep. So literally, it's, it's it doesn't have to do with only sushi. It, it seems to be omakase. It's almost like I the leave it up to you. Selection Choose and something chef's for choice option yes. where sometimes that exactly. actually means something and sometimes they just use what they have too much of and need to get rid of. <laughs> yep. I'm not gonna say it. Okay. It tends to be that traditionally in America, you see that at sushi restaurants, not every restaurant. But uh, so it's not just sushi. Okay. Could but you? it doesn't seem to be just sushi, especially if you go to J- Japan. It probably any restaurant that's a little bit more fine dining has that as an option, likely. Good to know. Okay. Second place. Yeah. Is my commit. Okay. Uh, it was... 
probably the more distinctive of all of these. Full, full stop. It's probably the most distinctive of all the bourbons that we've bourbons and whiskeys that we've had. Period. Because I definitely had to do a triple take nose wise after getting a hit of it off the top from the very beginning. So I love the um, backwards facing flavor palette that usually occupies this uh, medium, which is like the sweet overtone uh quickly quickly dipping into like the bigger body flavors this hit you with big body at the very top and then like was like if you don't slow down you're going to burn out and literally you would burn out like there was petrol at the very top it was like no take your time or you're gonna hurt yourself so commit great job it's just it's it was a little too strong off the top. I feel like petrol is definitely not a flavor palette that I want to liken to my beverage. In you know, general. it's funny because for me, that type of smell is actually very nostalgic because my uncle who I grew up with and spent a lot of time with, he was an amateur race car driver. So his, garage smelled like this all the time and so that sort of smell just makes me feel at home so i actually really enjoy that smell which is weird and like i said the minute i smelled it i pictured a mechanic like being in one of those mechanic garages Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that can be off-putting for some but for for people like me it's actually like i feel like i'm back at home i feel like i'm with my uncle or my dad or whoever you know that makes that you visited for that smell. But if you don't know anybody for that, maybe you only go there when your car's broken, so that's not a good memory. <laughs> maybe not. I'm yeah. going to say something. It's a joke. It is not meant to be taken seriously. Whose top three is this, Anthony? Is this your Wait, top, top three? Oh, mine? top three. I thought, <laughs> sorry, I got confused for a second. You meant top three forever? No, for he's, this. He's saying... I'm going through my top three right now, Anthony. Oh. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm saying... I, I, I preface this saying it's a joke. It is not meant to be serious. <laughs> I already forgot that. <laughs> but yeah. Now, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just being... You, you know how Key and Peele do the, do the skit where they have the, uh, the Obama translator. That's Ex- Absolutely. That's what I was absolutely. doing. Right? Absolutely. Nat absolutely. said it much more... Eloquently. Thank eloquently. you. Eloquently. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it so anthony i love you i i'm never going to shame you for for being you so don't, don't ever think that i'm going to shut you down uh in a very mean fashion if i come off as mean it's supposed to be funny okay <laughs> yeah yeah it did look like you were about to take a sip so i was like but, oh i could interject here but i don't know <laughs> obviously i struggle with that no, I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna try and get through all three just because like I want to get these done, and then I also want to turn on the AC because also because the remodeling was happening, I turned off the AC, and my room is now eighty three degrees. How are you not dripping? So I'm gonna hurry up. Go ahead, finish your That's your insane. bit. Anyway, so yeah, here's my it. here's my third. It's pretty obvious. It's the uh, it's the Mars, um, sweet Jesus. Okay, the alcohol is actually starting to <laughs> get in the way. Um, so the Mars EY was nuanced enough to kind of tease at other things. The milk t- the milk flavor was really interesting. Especially after I figured out what it was, like having a few sips after that and kind of exploring where it shows up in the palette was really cool. I really wish I had, this is the only one that I wish I had read earlier before sipping because I would have loved to explore more of the other flavor palettes, especially the strawberry because I do not get that. Um, Yeah, like at all. But uh, overall, an interesting spirit. I would buy this one speaking of i would pick this maybe one while you go turn your ac on think about your ratings and your price points your numbers man mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. numbers i can do all if that right now. let's go okay yeah. go yeah. for it so we'll start with third uh the akashi this is a 
This is like a uh, a high three. This is like a like three point eight, three point seven. This is good. It has some interesting stuff, but I wouldn't I wouldn't drink this just like out the blue. Like if I knew what it was and it was at a bar and it was on sale, I still wouldn't get it. It's just it's just not it's not for me. So it that does not mean it is not tasty for those who are trying to jump into the world of uh, whiskey and bourbon and they only have a flavor palette that's reminiscent of wine. This is a great intro because this is basically like a wine and a whiskey had a baby. Yeah. So three point eight, I would pay. 40 bucks for it. Wow, okay. If I had if I had to pay for it. Cuz I cuz I know imports like this kind of stuff always oh, cost a pretty penny. You're just Um yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was if it was if I was in Japan and I was picking this up, you would sell that me to me for 20 <laughs> okay. bucks. Yeah, and I'd pick it up. Um the Comet uh, this is a week four. Uh, so like a 4.2, 4.3. I would not every day sip this, nor would I suggest this for the faint of heart. Um, it is not something that you introduce to a newcomer. You don't say, hey, by the way, do you guys like, do you want to try a whiskey? Here's a uh, Indian whiskey that's from a completely different flavor palette than most of the bourbons that are on the market right now. Have fun. Oh, and also, beware, uh, the petrol, don't worry about it. Just just take it slow. Like, again, the petrol thing is, is a big warning sign for, for me in terms of, one, suggesting it to people, and two, uh, flavor for myself. So, uh, that being said, the Comet is a 4.3, because I would drink this in a bar if they suggested it, only for it to have, like, an ice cube in it, and for me to taste it, like, kind of chilled, because I think that could be really cool with this. Finally, have our last, which is the Mars EYE. Um... I would give this a 4.7. Yeah, I'd give this a 4.7. This is close to being sippable every single day. I think the only thing that's holding it up is a bigger body or deep, or a deeper flavor palette. Like I need something that's a little little bit more akin to a bourbon for me to like d- jump into these kinds of flavors and say that I want to have them every single day. It's a cool sipper and i would definitely suggest it to other people whether they'd be newcomers or uh laymen whatever whichever your background is i would say hey you need to try this because it's interesting pay attention to that milk texture and or milk uh flavor palette and see how it interacts with this flavor because it's really cool um so yeah that was three point 3.8, 3.7, 4.3, and a 4.8. Right? And what would you? What was the price of the? Oh, the price. The pricing of the Comet would be. Um, I'd pay forty for that. Um. Yeah, I pay forty for that, and for the uh, for the Mars, I would pay fifty five. The Mars, Done. I would pay fifty five. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go turn on the air conditioning and lower some yeah. windows. I will be right back. While, while he's doing that. Anthony, oh, man. You, I wrote mine down. Oh, so you want to go. I feel like I should. I mean, otherwise, like, okay. I mean, I can just, That's like, fair. I can show you all the paper. I got proof. I'm all. Hey, I'm, like, I'm with you. What if you I could be mind. a. I mean, I know you're probably not going to be a. I almost said modified. What is the word? Influenced by my inputs, <laughs> but you might. No, no, no. I am. I'm not going to be influenced, but I I can start my experience walkthrough because they are all very interesting. Mm-hmm. I 
don't think that I would ever give these three whiskeys in a single tasting experience. Definitely a weird combo. To somebody Uh-oh. else. Oh, no. <laughs> we lost Nat. He turned off... Uh, he, he, It, it, it's a very interesting combo. On one hand, you have something that's very reminiscent of an Irish whiskey or something that's more baking, bready, and kind of sweet but grainy. On the other side, you have something that's very wine forward. And then in the middle, you have one of the most unique and interesting. I don't even know what kind of experience to call it. Yeah. And to put them all into the same tasting experience is very interesting because you can't compare these two. It kind of tells me that Flaviar doesn't actually pre-taste these. Because very obviously, with these three together, you would go Akashi, Mars, Commit. In that order, A, B, C. That's how things generally work. You go generally low ABV, to higher ABV, you know, less complex and harsh to more complex and harsh. But I also think even, even outside of like, I totally agree in what you're saying, but to go even one step further, the, the, the genre of flavors is so vastly like a roller coaster. different <laughs> that, yeah, to go from one of these to the next one, you have no stepping off point to understand or progress your flavors by getting these three and trying them together. For example, if I were to introduce somebody to the Comet, which I think is the harshest one yeah. here, how am I actually going to start? I'm going to start... With something, and here's the thing, here's the crazy thing, is that I know Flaviar has these whiskeys because we were looking at some of the Flaviar whiskeys right before the podcast started to kind of guide what whiskeys we're going to do in future episodes. And we looked at things like the Star Word, and we were like, we're, we've done a few of the Star Words, we're not going to do the Star Word. But the Star Word is a very introductory single malt, right? Why not put the Comet? In with a Star Word and an American single malt so that you go from this light, fruity thing like the Akashi, but it has the essence of those smoky, peaty notes that could transition to something that's harsher like the Comet in a more controlled way as a tasting experience. And to put the commit to, to to essentially group all whiskeys yeah. in Eastern Asia yeah. in the way that they did is so I mean it's wild almost inappropriate to me because <laughs> it, it, it reminds really, me when when it, Eric and I really were in wild. high school, we were both doing track and we were both running with all the sprinters. And then, you know, we were practicing for weeks and weeks and weeks with the same coach for sprinting. We have our first meet and I got put on the mile and the two mile. And I go and talk to my coach and I'm like, why am I on these? I run with the sprinters. And they're like, oh, you're a sprinter? They didn't even notice me. They were just like, the white guys generally run long distance. If they're not white, they can't sprint. Or sorry, if they're if they're white, they can't do sprinting, right? And that's kind of the same thing going on here. It's like, oh, well, you know, these are Asian, so, and I guess Indian is now Asian. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, technically, yes, it's in Asia, but it's almost like calling Russian an Indian. Sorry, it's almost like calling a Russian an Asian. It's like, yes, technically they're an Asian, yeah. but like, generally you mean East Asia when you say Asian, not yeah. everybody. Um yeah, these styles are just so They should have put them they should have sprinkled them in with things that they relate to. Yeah, I I 100% agree. And it's really hard 
to like judge these in relation to each other. And so that is kind of what leads me to my rating, which from a personal preference point of view, as everybody on this podcast probably knows by now, I, I love Irish whiskey. I love the baking. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in the inverse of Nat. Right? My top is the OY45. It is an Irish whiskey experience. It tastes like sim- very similar to an Irish whiskey. It has a little bit of that sourdoughness that some people may not particularly enjoy, but it has that malted, unmalted barley type of flavor. Um, and it tastes, has that milk bread flavor to it. I don't know if it quite equals other experiences I've had, which would put it at like a four for me. And I think it's close to something like a red breast 12. Comparatively to something like the Nika that I enjoy more than the Red Breast 12, this is approaching that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to complicate my rating system like that by adding uh, decimal points. Uh, so this falls into like the four category for me. It may be closer to a five, but. It is definitely not my standard everyday drinker. I'm going to go for something like the Nika, the Red Breast 12 over this, but it has similar notes that I really enjoy to it. He's back. Now, yeah. oh, Nat has joined us. <sighs> now, okay, we're back. Nat, I was just talking about, uh, essentially to sum up the last five minutes, uh, yes. we think it's absolutely bonkers that these three whiskeys are together in one tasting experience. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's wild. I cannot believe they thought, yes, A, B, and C belong together because of yeah. X, Y, and Z. I can maybe yeah. understand one because they're located in a central, like, I guess, hemisphere of the <laughs> planet. They're on the eastern. They're on fifty percent of the planet. We should obviously. They should be. They're on the a, same a tasting experience for them. Of course. I mean, they're both. They both have Asian connotations with their. Just, f- just wild. get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah, get out of it, here. It's wild, and maybe they want to introduce people to the diversity of whiskey in another part of the world, but. The problem that I found, and Anthony kind of agrees with this, is that it doesn't do well to, it doesn't do a good job at framing any of these individual whiskeys in a way that would make them good. No. And that's kind of the problem. I think each of these whiskeys individually is good when framed correctly. Okay. So, for example, one of my examples was the Comet. It's obviously very harsh, but it's very unique and very diverse. Right. And in the light of if you started with something like a Star Wars, a very introductory single malt, and mm-hmm. built your way up to the Comet through a gauntlet of interesting <laughs> single malts, you would probably really like the Comet because of how interesting it is. But to throw this in between the Akashi and the Oai doesn't really do a good job of framing the Kemet in a light that people would enjoy. Absolutely not. And so my ratings are kind of interesting. My Give favorite me. in my first place, as I was just telling Anthony, is the Mars Oai 45, just like you. I okay. think it falls into the category of something like an Irish whiskey, which I enjoy the flavors of a lot. And so the baking, the breadiness, the milk bread, those types of flavors are really enjoyable for me and I like them. I don't think the Y45 is diverse enough to go into a daily drinker for me. Mm. But therein lies the controversy. 
I would probably put all of these whiskeys at a four. Don't uh me. You put I put two you of the put three. Three point eight. If we rounded yours, they'd all be fours. Semantics, whatever. <laughs> okay, you're dramatic right now. It is what it is. Go for it. <laughs> so my second place would be the Akashi. Okay. And the okay. reason that would be my second place is only because I could see myself wanting a bottle of this specifically for the use case that I mentioned when we were testing. I would love to have this over ice on a summer day or in a chilled glass because I could see this being a summer drinker and very interesting. I think the sake notes are wonderful. I love sake. This has that. That's very interesting to me. Now, that leads me to that Comet. Mm. The Comet is one of the most interesting nose and most unique experiences that I've had in a single malt whiskey. It reminds me of something like an Ardbeg Ugdal or something like a, um, what's the other one? Like a Dowmore, a, a, a high year Dowmore or something like that but at a far more affordable price, I imagine, although I haven't looked at the prices yet. Anthony, get ready. He's about Got all the prices ready. But okay. <laughs> Do you have the prices ready? I haven't looked at. The, I I I'll did a Google search, but on, I haven't actually looked at for them. you. Okay. Cool. So, the Comet is super super interesting, but I don't think I'd choose it over some of the other smokier flavors that I've found like the Ardbeg Oogdal I would go to over this or mm. something like the Dalmore Cigar Malt I would go to over this and so it's great and an interesting experience but I don't know if the flavor is something that I would go back to multiple times Fair. but it's so unique and so interesting that I do like it in a lot of ways it's got shelf appeal yeah it's really cool mm to pull this out and like find this. And so this is really one where all of these all, and I think you really have to take these out of this tasting experience to kind of wrap your head around this. So I think if you have all these together, I think 99% of people are gonna go, the Uai is the best one, the Akashi is the second best one, and the Komet is the third best one. That's not true, but okay. That's what you said? <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, no, it isn't. You, you like the Komet first. No, the Komet was I second like, for him. Yeah. So here's the thing. I th Komet yeah, was yeah. second, and then uh, the uh, Mars I think was first. most people are going to disagree. I think most people are going to say, oh, is best, Akashi's second best, and the Komet is going to be third. I think that is likely the case when you put these three together because of how it's f un disjointed mm. this experience is with these three whiskeys together is. I could see the commit with like a series of other scotches or something. The commit would do amazing. Would do right? great. Yeah, because the right? peatiness would completely compare towards that kind of petroly uh, early yeah. vibe what, at the very top of it. You put yeah. it with two... One sweet baby, sweet baby, <laughs> and all of a sudden it is so jarring that it's like, oh no, fuck this noise, right? Like it doesn't make sense to put this whiskey in this tasting it experience. It, it doesn't make it sense doesn't. to put a sake with the Y. It is so disjointed. Absolutely, I can't. But I can't agree more. No. In on the other hand. I really do think all of these fall into the same rating for me. And that's why I give them okay. all a four. Okay. You However, give them all a four? I give them all a four. They you all fall would, into a four. You would sample the Hawaii more than once after having it right now. I... To be entirely transparent, I have... <laughs> I have a half drinking bottle of Hawaii 45. No! <laughs> Treachery! 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 
is made worms meat of me. A plague on Did both Anthony your houses. Hear me? Did Anthony hear me? I mean, how dare you have Anthony. a half drinking bottle? Yeah, no, 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 Anthony. No, how dare Eric, you? Eric, I know. No, Eric, you. He you have a half drinking bottle <laughs> of a Y45. Wait, wait, one wow. second. One second. I'll be right back. What is this? Wow. He has a. He's he's what been a cheater. Sipping the sauce for so long. He doesn't even know the difference between good and bad anymore. He's been he's been partaking in the sacred sauce. It's too yeah, late now. That was his first place, uh, right? But it's the same rating. It's his first place, but it's still a four. Which I'm like, okay, boomer. <laughs> what is this? You say it's your you say it's your favorite out of three other whiskeys that we had randomly, but this is still your top out of all of them. We rate them all the same, Wait, but this said, is your favorite. Yeah, does, okay. Bud. Does he put Red yeah, Breast okay. twelve out of three? He puts Red Breast twelve at he has. But then to he was saying that he would drink a Red Breast he, twelve over some some of these. What didn't he? <laughs> Look, look, look. Wait a second. Look. Wait a second. Okay. Oh, Wait a second. Man. Okay. Okay. Before y'all kick me off the podcast. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up before you kick That'll me be off four the weeks. podcast. This, this, this man is fake. This, this man, man is, is fake. <laughs> so, I don't think it's the OI 45. I have a regular OI. That's spelled completely different. Oh. Uh, no, no, it's no, not no, the exact it's same. It's just backwards. Oh, and, you reflect no, your Anthony, crap, Anthony, man. Anthony, it's backwards. That was one of the worst situations yeah, yeah, for yeah. that. It was... I, was, I was like, don't embarrass what? yourself. It's okay. Not embarrassed whatsoever. <laughs> this guy's reversing everything. Oh, man. Why do you have to so, reverse? So it might don't? be. It, it, oh, I'm reversed too. It is a little bit different. So. Yeah. The uh, this isn't the Y forty five, so they have different labels. This is the regular Y, but I do love the regular Y. So wait, the what is the difference between the regular Y and the Y forty five? I just looked that up, and I I am interested as well. So the Y is a blended whiskey that is part of the Y whiskey series, traditional mm. Y a Japanese whiskey with a standard proof of forty three. 3% ABV it is a well-balanced whiskey with a smooth approachable flavor the Y45 is a higher, higher proof, proof. version of the Y whiskey 2% is a big yeah. deal yo I suppose yep. the Y45 traditionally was their expression to use in cocktails so that it can hold up kick. to the more dynamic flavor. That's hilarious. Good job, Flaviar, for putting something that is made specifically for cocktails instead of straight drinking on a taste test. <laughs> Bro. Do your research. To be fair, to be fair, no, to be fair, the Sagamore that we had, and then having the Sagamore uh, overproof for uh, to sip, to sip, it was good. He just drank straight, <laughs> straight out of the bottle. Buddy. <laughs> Buddy. I never thought I'd see the day. I know I know I know we're all a little warm and toasty right now, but you need to you need to put the bottle down. <laughs> I just wanted to look. I just wanted to taste test it to the OY forty five. Okay, sir. Okay, boomer. Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, all of that to say, the Sagamore that we had that we all liked, the uh, barrel proof was actually better, and that this was the one that was intended for blending of yeah. spirits. So, oh, sorry, uh, spirit based drink. So, oh, yeah, that's like supposedly it. rise in general, right? Like <laughs> rise in general are supposed to be yes, harsher and more mixy but then yeah. you and i were like no old forester rise the best thing ever old forest and you i did not say that i i don't remember saying that okay that i don't was, know what the price here. difference is you want me to but oh yeah i guess you don't it's a different one these are the same <laughs> really just they're the clear. same they're pretty much the same they're the, the same uh, like there's you very have two what is it two per, it's two percent between the two yeah that's it there's no way that you have any form of actual uh, depth of flavor change between the two percentages. Yeah, it's so similar. 
buy whatever one's cheaper. The Awai versus the Awai 45, they're so close. The Awai is probably cheaper because it's marked as like a lesser uh, percentage. The Awai is just as good. Um, yeah. And I do have a, a half bottle drink. I, I, I love this Japanese whiskey. I, I keep a bottle of it. He's just a shill. He's been a plant a this entire time. He's been waiting for this episode that leads in particular. Us to a wonderful opportunity. Oh. Why? <laughs> if you want to sponsor us. There's always one. <laughs> look. Your Japanese whiskey could be the <laughs> What are Japanese whiskeys except for a why? I don't know yet. As long as you pay us. <laughs> I don't know. And with that, yes. we can return to our regular, regularly scheduled programming. Fantastic. I'm here for it. I'm here so, for it. Yes, I rate all of these a four. Okay. Which is, which is, which by the way, should go to show you based on my previous rating. All of these are pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, in their own right. They honestly have a market for all of these. Tasting them in together is a f terrible idea. But if you like single malts, if you like scotches, the Comet is super, super interesting. And it has some interesting flavors that I think are something you could go back to over and over again. The Akashi is a wonderful summer blended whiskey. Mm -hmm. that is fruity and sake rem reminiscent and like if you like sake and you're getting into whiskeys this is going to be a wonderful transitionary whiskey for you and on a hot summer day in a chilled glass i w i would definitely drink this for sure the y45 is my favorite and by the way i don't know if i place the other one the comet and the akashi are so close for me they'd be tied for second it really depends on my mood, which one comes second. If it's you, a hot summer day at the pool, I'm picking the Akashi every Akashi, time. Yeah. If we're at home and I'm hanging out, eating a steak or dinner with the family, then I'm pulling out the Comet. You know, mm. it, it really depends. Fair. The Y45 is only first on my list because I prefer bready baking flavors. And this is the only one in this expression set that gives that at all. And that he has on his shelf. Yeah, and um, sponsored by OI. <laughs> not really, though. So don't sue. Not, not sponsored. If you want to buy it, just buy it. Yeah. It's fine. Anthony. No, I, I was thinking that Eric was potentially going to forget because we went out of order. Oh, I forgot the prices. I forgot the prices. I forgot the prices. For the OI45, I'd really like to see this around, um, right around $45. Okay. The Comet is super interesting, but I'd really like to see this around, uh, probably around $35 to $45 as well, but 40 is probably where I'm going to make my mark. Yep. Akashi, this one, I think, needs to be a cheaper experience only because of the style of the experience that I'm getting. I want to see this around $30, 30 to $35. So I would put this around, I'd buy this at $35. For sure. All right. So I'm I think you'll both be pleasantly surprised. I'm going to go in a completely different order than you guys so in second place nice. we have mars a y45 much cheaper than either of you expected Ooh, it's a pretty that's bottle crazy. only 32 dollars wow yeah that's actually so originally cheap. for me i thought this was going to be last place it only had like a 3.5 out of 10 and 20 bucks when we had that first tasting of it it just wasn't nearly yeah. it just wasn't good but after it breathed everything changed and i was like okay no this is actually a mm -hmm. five out of ten 35 bucks the fire nation came yeah good. it's okay so honestly it's been a while now so i can't remember too much about it but those are the numbers wrote down. <laughs> wow 
These people can't hold No, man, y'all just talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh! But yeah, so that one's in second place. Anyway, um, then we'll go ahead and move to third place, which I have here. Sure, surely I have it here. Yes. And that is da -da 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 -da, the Akashi. The Akashi is actually third place for me. So it's only 46 bucks on Flaviar. Um, I gave it a 4 out of 10 and said I'd pay 30 bucks for it. You know, and this one didn't change for me on round 2. Uh, it, it's good. I give it a lower rating because it's just it's basically it's i don't know it's almost like a wine like i said it's it's not that impressive but it's not bad it's something i would definitely get to share with someone that's intimidated by whiskey basically for sure for sure yeah and then since we're doing the speed run round um we move on to the last one of course my favorite the commit the indian one Ooh. So this one is way higher than y'all expected. Forty-eight bucks. I actually said I would spend. Wait, three dollars. Oh, I thought you said much lower. Right? No, 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 no. Eight dollars yeah. higher. Eight dollars. But uh, I, I said, I, said I would spend yeah. seventy-five bucks on this. It's got a seven Ooh, out of ten. Wow. It's got a what seven are you out of doing, ten, dude. Okay, we've talked about this a lot. This one is the is one of the few whiskeys that we have tried that evolves and changes and has multiple characteristics and multiple flavors, multiple smells that ch changes over time. We, we have talked about how that's something that we cherish. And I think you guys maybe don't like it so much because the certain harshness of the petrol. But as we talked about during that spotlight, I actually have some nostalgia when it comes to the petrol and it so just it doesn't bother me that much. I'm so used to it. It's not harsh and overwhelming. So I really, really enjoyed the Kemet. That's fair. And so yeah, it's a seven out of ten. It only reached seven out of ten because it's only a forty six percent ABV. So it's not like an incredible Bardstown that I've had that's like hundred and twenty eight proof and still is complex and amazing. This is complex and cool, but very low ABV, so I'm not that impressed. But I, hmm. I do I, like it, I, and it's so unique. I like I, I like that. I and I, I agree a hundred percent. This is a dynamic and interesting whiskey, with a lot of character, and so I could see how if you like the character, of this whiskey, it's gonna rate super highly for you because it has a lot going on. Yeah. Hmm. Anthony needs his whiskey to be like a Pokemon. Pokemon. How so? With evolution, oh, yeah, it has three evolutions. It needs to it needs to evolve and get stronger yeah. in some way. It doesn't have to be strong as in like it gets like it burns more, but it needs to advance in its pers persona. I feel like I've I think that is Anthony's like necessity. He needs it to grow. Yeah, or if it doesn't grow, then he, then you're it, just like fuck. You're it. right. Or it needs exactly, to be like I was about to say, yeah, if it's like 128 proof and it's just all good, it doesn't have to have any evolutions, it's just... <laughs> it's just yeah. He needs a Rayquaza, <laughs> or yeah. he needs a starter. That's all, yeah, it's, right. that's all it is. I, I think with that, everybody <laughs> should expect that we'll try the new Injury Whiskey soon, mm -hmm. which is a single malt Indian whiskey. It's their highest rated one. It's won gold at a bunch of... Uh, world Ooh. whiskey competitions. Uh, they just started distributing it outside of India, as far as I know. So expect that episode sometime Soon. in the near future. Yeah, man. Um, but yes, I've been I've been meaning to get it. I haven't had it yet. That is kind of the Comet. Also awesome, but I've heard a lot of good things about the injury. Yeah. Being of good things, did we want to do like a speed run round of video games or nah? 
Let's do it. Yeah, let's do I it. Because I feel like we're all going to talk about the same. Well, actually, I don't no. know about Anthony because Anthony might be doing something different. But I know for sure Eric's on the okay. same drug. Okay, so I have a list. Don't do y'all want me, me to just like? I didn't. I didn't judge you. I just said that we're on the same <laughs> drug, dude. Hey, look, we still we go to the same pusher. I, okay, I actually <laughs> have an interesting conversation to have about this. Oh, okay. So, so question: yeah. Do y'all want? I have a list. I could run through it rapidly without pausing, without stopping. So that when y'all talk, you might want to, if you want to bring it back up, we bring it back up. So I don't yeah. talk yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. Go, for, go it. for it. Okay. News. Helldivers, PlayStation Network, banning people, not letting people play. Holy shit, did Stop. that happen Just while we pause. Were gone? Just pause. Just oh pause. Oh my gosh, it did. <laughs> pause. Oh, Didn't make man. it past one. Pause. Okay. Pause. So, <laughs> if anybody hasn't heard... While we were on break, we didn't get to talk about this. <clears throat> PlayStation fumbled Sony, the bag. They fumbled the ball at the one yard line. And they have yet to Dude. pick it back up. That shit is going down. Uh, Hell Divers 2 and the developers that work on Hell Divers 2, this is not a slight against you. Arrowhead did nothing well, wrong. The, the mistake they this made was Arrowhead signing a contract. Did, well, that gave them yeah. no We've control played, yeah. over yeah, this. Yeah, and sure. they are currently still fighting for yeah. the players, but Sony doesn't give a shit. It's too late. It, it's yeah, I was about to say, late. it's so hard. What are you going to... Look, money talks. And at the end of the day, Sony has far too much money for Arrowhead or any individual or set of individuals to do anything. Here's the thing. And people, people won't like this. People will be against this in their entirety. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you, we or anybody thinks about it. If Sony, it doesn't matter if Helldivers 2 tanks and never does good again. It doesn't matter if Arrowhead goes under because of reviews at this point. It just doesn't matter to Sony. Sony got all their money for this, right? 95% yeah. of all of the sales of a video game happen in the first yeah. And now they banned month. everyone else from buying it again. Guess what? It's, it's, it's after the first month. Here's the thing. You could say, hey, people need to talk with their wallet. Doesn't matter at this point. The money has been Dude. done. Sony, if you don't like this and you make enough noise, guess what? Sony's going to whisk Helldivers 2 into obscurity and then they'll make a new game. And if you like that game, guess what? It'll sell because people have memories like goldfish. Nobody cares. Here's so how bad that is. How many games have come out since Battlefront 2 dropped the ball on skins costing hundreds of of thousands of dollars or whatever nonsense that it does. You would have to spend half your life or some nonsense unlocking Darth Vader skins. <laughs> Most negatively reviewed game of all time. Mm -hmm. Did that stop anybody from buying their next game that came out? No. no, it doesn't because people don't take the extra step. And that's the problem. And that's not gonna change anytime soon and that no. sucks. And Arrowhead's getting the short end of the stick here. Because here's the thing. If you were a developer and, and people put yourselves in their shoes, you just developed a game. You work so hard on it. And a company comes to you and says, hey, you give me 5% of your sales and I'll give you $30 million out the gate right now. And you get to develop your game and I'll release it. I'll pay all the marketing costs. Your game will do so well. And here's the thing. Arrowhead's may bank off of Helldivers 2 for as sure. well. For sure. Like, they're going to be good yeah. because of this. Yeah. And. It doesn't feel good. Could, yeah. could you, in your right mind, say no to Sony if they offered no. to literally fund the rest of your life? No. Yes. I don't know. I it's got morals. No. I mean... Anthony, that's shut up. 
I mean, up. look, you don't he, you don't have a team of people under you who you have look, to make sure get paid for the work. Well, you doing. you wouldn't I'm you wouldn't have a team that, right? at certain levels. Yeah, you wouldn't have a team under you, but they already did, I suppose. But yeah, because Airhead just, existed before this. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're a small company. Here's the here's the biggest thing, though, for me at least, is that Sony has enough money to where. I, I don't think you can blame the people underneath that. Because in my opinion, if somebody came to you and said, hey, you and the rest of the people at your company are going to live comfortably for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Done. Just, just give Today. me the game. No questions asked. Just give me the game. Just give me the game. I, I mean... I, I you don't say no. Say, you don't. Yeah. You don't say no. I can't go to that. Arrowhead and say that's a bad decision, even though it sucks. I don't think they knew that. Uh, and the, here's the thing: I don't think they, they suspected that it would be a a element that would become so prominent you, so early. Do you know how much Sony pays the people that sell this idea? That here's the thing: the people that actually came and made that proposition. They didn't come and say, hey, we're going to do morally interesting things, things to your game. <laughs> they were like, man, we love your idea. Yeah. Your idea is fucking gold. This yeah. is amazing. And for years, they were probably like, we just want to support. You. We want to make sure you have everything you can because the people need to experience this. And Sony puts their money where their mouth is. The thing is, these aren't like empty promises at the time. They're like, no, we're going to get your game on the Steam. We're going to get your game in the news. We're going to get your game where it needs to be. What do you need for us to make it happen? And then after the fact, after everything's said and done, Sony's like, hey, can you put that? Just, you know, make it to where they need a PlayStation Network account. And they're going to be like, oh, we don't need them to have that. It's like, no, 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 no. Look, we have all these APIs, all this stuff. It'll just make it easy. It'll make it so you don't have to worry about how friends and stuff work. Look at this. All this stuff makes it easy. It's literally the scene in Baby Reindeer where you're like, oh, this is bad. Dude, (laughs) it. The thing is, is that people think... A lot of people don't work in industries with people who just have tons of money to throw around. But it's never the person that you're working with being evil Mm. when you're working with evil companies. It just isn't. You're working with people who actually care, who want your product to succeed, who want everything to go well. And then at the end of the day... They add on small bullet points that add up to evil when everything's said and done. To where you didn't notice it and the person you're working with probably didn't even notice it because it wasn't their decision. It was a boardroom of million and billionaires slowly adding little requirements here and there that changed their pie chart to show them getting more money. Yep. It's death by a money, thousand cuts. They and they win. have enough money to where they can just keep adding a cut regardless of the cost. Disgusting. So oh no, in this case, I think by looking at the data, you can <sighs> speculate, of course, that this was carefully planned because there are certain stipulations in like the Steam uh, terms of service where after 90 days, if this... If this hasn't, if this happens within ninety days of purchasing something, you can get a refund. You can but refund. if they do a change like this to a game mm. after the ninety days, you cannot. And they did it the day after. Oh, so I didn't yes, know they made that. the change. That is like terrible. Ninety-one days after release. That's yeah. so scummy. So there's no yeah, like. It, how can that I not want be everybody to take a sip of the Comet right now. <laughs> I might take a sip of Comet right now. I don't have any more Comet. I, I actually didn't finish everything. like anything because my stomach upset. Anthony, join us, brother. So I just had some of the Comet, and I'm getting 
Like barbecue meat. Now. The actor. Like the meaty smell of umami. This no, no, no. I'm drinking the Okay. Okay. I got a little bit less left. I got like a meaty flavor off of it. That was ah. pretty cool. <laughs> Not ah. there for me. But yeah, this, the Sony stuff, I mean, obviously, here's the thing. Somebody at Sony playing this, obviously. For sure. They're, for sure. They, they, have, they have so much money and research behind how do we make sure that we get money off of this. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no doubt that it was and the responsibility no. I just the responsibility so on the developers especially for future ones I mean yeah mistakes happen but like you do not sign away the right to choose who to sell something to for that's, sure I feel like that's easy to say but hard when you actually have oh, the money that. in front of just you fucking stick to your guns man you don't need Sony you can... the problem is, Anthony, is that Sony offers a Anthony massive shit. amount of money it's not. It's, it's, it's not all about dude, money. Anthony, it's not all about money. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Not everybody can be. Not everybody. Can, I'm gonna make a comparison yeah. that will obviously liken to something that I'm experiencing right now. But not everybody is super giant. Even then, if somebody mm -hmm. offered super giant enough money, then here's the thing. The only reason super giant can say that is because Bastion made them the money that they needed to survive for everything. So yeah. Arrow, Arrowhead and other companies didn't have that luxury. When Sony comes to you and says, you can all retire now or do whatever the fuck you want for the rest of your life with the money that I'm about Just to give you. Just give us you, the game. What are you going to do? It's the same thing that you see on th it's shows like Shark Tank whenever you see huge investors, right? When somebody says, I'm giving you fuck you money, and for the rest of your life, you can do whatever you want now. All you have to do is give me this. 99.9% .9 of the time, people give them that. Because they just want to live their life. Yeah. Stress-free. Worry-free. Anthony, if you told me the song that I was cooking up was wanted by a major artist... And they were willing to pay me $5 million for it. Which is enough to set you up for life if you invest it. You can literally just like disappear off the face of the planet, invest it, and you will never have to... You and your significant other will never have to work again. I'm saying yes. For sure. And I'm sure that they probably had... The, the team at Arrowhead probably had the same conversation... At some point in time, whenever they started dealing with Sony, it's sad that it's developed into this piece of uh, history in gaming where we saw the rise of one of the greatest possible game models to grace our screens since Halo. And it got squashed by, by literally by uh, capitalistic yep. greed. Very ironic. Yeah. It's super it, ironic. It is. It, with this it is particular so game, it's so ironic. It's so ironic. It's so stupid. Like, I don't think you could have picked a better game to exemplify, like, the, hilarious. the shit show that is high-end, like, high-end game deals. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to support a AAA game that has affiliations with major companies anymore because now I'm like, I don't know when you're going to go ahead and take a crap inside well, the I mean, pie. I don't know when you're going to take a game and basically be like, well, there is an ethical there is an ethical consideration in this that we as people should be taking into account and like putting our best foot forward. And that is not happening just in general well, across. That's the like board. a great point though no. because I mean. Maybe three or four years ago, there was a time where it was like Apex Legends is out, and a year later, there's there's nothing. It's like nothing is coming out. Yeah. Everyone was like, "What yeah. am I supposed to play? I guess I'm gonna keep playing the game I've been playing, whether it was World of Warcraft or Apex or your yeah. cup of tea, right?" Now yeah, right, it is so easy for people to make video games. The indie scene is insanely huge. The number of good games you can play is for great, sure. and I. 
I'm so bummed that I won't get to. I'm, I'm not going to choose to ever enjoy Helldivers again. I, it, that has come and passed, but I will yeah. not go back. I will not support yeah. it again because of what has happened. But it's actually not that hard for me to say that because V Rising just came out, you know, and there's all these other games, Core Keeper and Hack Mud, and there's mm. just, I mean, that's an old one, but it just came on my radar. Like, there's just so many games that I, I don't, I'm not, I'm good. I, I'm good. I got plenty of stuff to do, you know? I mean, I 100% agree. And, uh, but here is the, the sad fact of AAA gaming and how nefarious this situation is. Is that Helldivers 2 would probably have not existed without Sony. For sure. And so, while we can say... We wish this wouldn't have happened, and I 100% agree. It wouldn't have happened. For anybody who's like, Helldivers 2 was an experience that I'm so glad existed, without this corrupt situation, it just wouldn't have existed. Because Arrowhead never, was going to shut down. They we weren't going to be a thing. Exactly right? what happened. Like, because most people. Oh yeah. Most yeah. people. Oh shit. Most people right. probably yeah, think that everything's we okay. Why are we talking it. about this? They they fixed it. They didn't fix it. Yeah. Right. So they didn't fix yeah. it. Didn't. It's it's still. Yeah. Current. So basically, what Sony Ugh. suddenly required everyone to connect a PlayStation account, otherwise you couldn't play the game anymore, which meant well, which is not available in. Well, certain I think the the, the, the was like 172 it countries. Is, yeah, countries. It's yeah. it's kind of a comedy of errors. So. Essentially, from the get-go, at some point in the, uh, so, uh, from the CEO, about three to six months prior to the game's release, Sony came to Arrowhead and say, hey, can we just require a PSN? That'd be great. Arrowhead was like, okay. And then Sony was like, yeah, 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 no, no, you're, we're requiring a PSN to play this game. And they were like, Okay. The day of, when they first released Helldivers 2, there was a bug that they released that essentially said, hey, logins are broken. They went through and they switched and took out all requirements on login and essentially said, everybody can log into this game. Mm -hmm. We're doing a fix. Everybody can log in. So I, I want At you to At that point in time, pause. the PSN... Because you're basically reading the story that was told by the people that committed the crime for their defense. But all that you'll say doesn't line up with the fact that they have chosen specifically to ban all the countries. And they could have done that from the get-go. They could have done that immediately, with, and, and, and no Don't. harm would have been done. Even though you didn't need the PSN account. I'm getting to that. I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. So... At that point, the CEO of Arrowhead went in and said, make a fix. Everybody can log in. At that point in time, everybody could log in. Everybody started buying Helldivers 2. Everybody was able to log in. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. A few patches later, and at that point in time, they had fixed the bug for logins. And they re-implemented the normal login rules that were supposed to go out on day one. Mm -hmm. This was Which all was Arrowhead. Yeah. At that point in time, it went live. Now you have to remember, Arrowhead, they do the code base for the game itself. They're implementing APIs, they're implementing the code, they're implementing how the login goes. Sony is their publisher. Sony mm. is the one who dictates everything on the store page for Steam. They dictate how it actually gets published, what platforms it goes on. They are the ones talking to Steam. Arrowhead has no react like interaction with Steam whatsoever. They are not a publisher. They push code to a resource. They are a developer. Sony takes that resource and puts it onto something like Steam. Mm -hmm. Sony dictates whether countries are allowed or disallowed in Steam. Sony dictates what happens there, but they don't dictate what the code does. The CEO said, change the code so that the login bug is fixed. Sony never 
implemented country lockouts, country specific things, or anything with PSN stuff onto Steam itself. They didn't do and that they from have. day one. They so, I, I'm and, not agreeing. And if I'm they hundred percent, they should. If all of this is true, then they would have. There's no reason that they wouldn't have because they've done it now. They've done it now because of the backlash. Sony did not care about the backlash from day one because they never, they did not care. No, Let's no, no. put it simply, Look, they did not care. So when, when it, it was if, released, they were like, don't do all this extra shit. We're just going to so allow you, Helldivers 2 to You want us to believe to be that there. when they released the game, originally planned, they were going to have PlayStation Network required at login, but they were not going to prevent you from lo from buying it from your country. You're going to be able to buy it in your country, then go to try to log in, and then be denied service because of the failure to log in. No, that didn't happen. No, they 100%. were ready. They had the list. 100%. They were ready to tell Steam, don't let these people buy it. You're... They didn't care enough. They didn't care enough about that. Sony doesn't give a shit. They don't care. Here's the thing. Sony, when they implemented that, said, why would we put country specific things? If people in those country buy it and then they try to log in and never do a refund, we We've get free money. money. Sony doesn't care. They don't care until the people complained. And then they were like, oh, we don't Fuck, want new people buying of, that. Screw that. Kind of spitting up. Put in country stuff, right? You're thinking about it from the perspective of a company that cares. No, I'm not. No, I'm if not. If they cared, they would have I'm not put thinking country about it from that perspective. things in there. I'm talking about how when you are sharing their story, their story does not line up with any of the actions that were t taken. So to me, it's kind of like disingenuous to read their story as if it's true i'm reading it from the ceo this is all from the arrowhead ceo which i believe the arrowhead ceo is 100 percent transparent here and there's a lot I'm of saying there's no way he's put I, I, out. from what i just said which maybe you didn't hear i'm saying there's no way 100 percent. literally he's he's outlined the whole story i i if you go and read his press releases it's pretty apparent that Sony did not care. They handle the publishing. Sony handles what's on the Steam page and how that's set up. Arrowhead implemented what they implemented and they did this live. Here's the, here's the problem too, is that like you can go back to day of, see the login issues, see when the CEO and the, the developers talk about how they're going to fix this when it's implemented how it's implemented all of this is live on the web right now so like those things happened and they're transcripted live in the moment so it it would be really odd to see the patch notes and see what they talked about and see these updates and for them not be accurate and so what it really comes down to is they implemented those fixes to get people online and Sony didn't care enough about people on Steam buying or not buying their product based on where they were. They were like, we have a warning on the front page for the PSN. It actually, we don't care it if actually somebody didn't outside warn you about the of PSN. that It just buys that? said something about like a third party. And, and it was like, uh, in general, generic. There was no specificity. Agreed. I'm connecting the dots from like on the Steam page. It said a third party the game. is required. On Sony's page, it says that that third party. Oh, no, they actually is a changed PSN. that. You can go I'm to like saying... the Google uh, Time whatever thing where you go and find what a page used to look like. They changed that around when they changed everything. So for the longest time, it didn't. It didn't say what they say it said. Agreed. They changed it to but, look at like. But it either... said what they said they said. Either way, what I'm getting at is that Sony, when they implemented the Steam page, said this third party license agreement, that's all, that's enough. Anybody who buys it and doesn't have a PSN, they don't care about them. If they return it, they return it. If they don't return it, free money. I think you're both arguing about being right about the exact same thing. 
Anthony, I have a feel. I, I'm going to uh, agree in the sense that Arrowhead knew what they were having to do beforehand. That's what I'm they saying. I, I, and it feels like Eric I is th- saying that I they didn't it, know. And I, th- I don't think no, Eric is saying that I'm either. Not saying that. Eric is saying that they were aware of it, but this it's their hands are tied in terms of how they can represent themselves. They did in that not. Regard. And here's the thing: the CEO even goes on record and talks about how he is to blame in this situation because he was aware of the PSN maybe causing issues, but he doesn't handle publishing. But he cannot handle what Steam or or Sony does in regards to who can get the game from Steam. But he but made he the decision. To that. No, no, he agreed to it, 100%. Yes. He signed off with Sony and said PSN is required, 100%. But he off the can't, bat. Nobody at Arrowhead can change the Steam page. It just doesn't work like that. Because he can't touch what's publicly facing. Everybody at Sony can touch that. They're the publishing company. They dictate what's yeah, on Yeah, so that, that was page. the thing that we need to say before we forget about it, because Sony made a public statement saying that, okay, we're going to undo this, we're going to fix it, we're going to make it right. And the only thing they changed was, yep. oh, well, and you don't have to, I think, do a PSN account anymore. They did not reverse the change that banned people from buying the game in all of those countries. From certain areas, because they're planning on rolling it out again yeah. later. A hundred percent. Yeah. Sony doesn't care. They are going well, to enforce but the, point the is, PSN account. That is why it is, they haven't fixed it. The problem's not solved. So a lot of people no, think, sure. oh, Never they, they undid the, it. It's the game okay. Is broken. They didn't undo it. Yeah, no. Listener, watcher, whoever you are, the game is broken for, for certain people. Like, it's just not actually, like, viable and playable because of where they're located. And Sony's not going to pull it from the marketplace for those people, nor are they going to make any amendments to who is allowed to play that game because the more people that make uh, make accounts for their Sony uh, Sony network or whatever, the PSN network, the more money they make. Yeah. Because if you sign up for that account, the chances are higher that you will buy other games within that network. The more people that they get inside the network, the more people they can get for possible other sales. You've already gotten the money that they, we can get from you for this single purchase for Helldivers 2. If you don't buy anything else, we, we, we've got your information anyway. And we can go ahead and pitch something else to you, depending on how it goes. It's scummy. And, it's and just to be clear, it sucks. Their, their press release was very clear about this, too. PSN, in their press release, never said they weren't going to require PSN requirement just just so. that the specific forced requirement that they had just rolled out mm. was not rolling out what do you else yeah, you got on that so list, the only other news thing i discovered or learned about is that oh, uh, god how world was never ai generated never no. that, that came out as so, false accusations by some angry person that you know loves pokemon too much I, really? And so if you remember, I, I talked about that a little bit, too. Nah, that, yeah, like, yeah. it is very possible that I it... Well, of course, be because, I mean, if it be. really was, then they would have been sued easily <laughs> by Nintendo. Which is what I said. Like, the people that were legally dealing with this were going to figure out the answer. They were, like... They, it didn't make sense that they weren't already yeah. in yeah. allegations for the development. Do of you this think game? that one of the um, biggest gaming companies on the they, face of the planet they, would not dude, sue them? They go if after they the were smallest fr- sure. freaking fish in the sea. Like they mess yeah. with people that they really shouldn't. Mess They've with. sued Twitch streamers and shit before. Like yeah. they sued like they, a mod recently, right? Whatever. Like DayZ or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, something real dumb. Yeah. Like, are we really going to think that they're not going to sue the biggest game? One of the absolutely biggest game not. releases of last absolutely year not. off of this. It's like, so that's absolutely really... not. Okay. So All that right, makes speed sense. Run, games Next I've played. Core Keeper, Necrodancer, oh, Rusty's Retirement, okay. Hack okay, Mud, nice. No Rest for the Wicked, okay. V okay. Rising, and Star Citizen. Okay. Wow. Oh. Okay. No Rest for the Wicked. I saw yeah. some clips on your, uh, Dude. On your um, stories. Dude, How's it's, that? I, it's a love and hate relationship. Um, 
I love it because I can see how like yeah I, I wish Diablo games were more like this uh, I hate it yeah. because like the first weapon you get that you kind of have to use because it's legendary is a great sword which I thought was going to be super awesome but it's a bit slow and I'm constantly wanting to be oh, very quick in my combat and so yeah. it's like I don't know I want to play it enough to get to where I have maybe those dual wielding daggers and I can maybe have faster gameplay with some light armor but in the very beginning of the game it's like no you have to go slow methodical and it's just hard for my brain because I'm a fast person there's actually I don't know if I put it in a short but there's a video That's where fair. I talk about it and I was like I love how this is very realistic in a combat situation you're both going to be timid you're going to be slow you're not going to want to go at each other right away and that's how the ai was and that's how i was but then i realized but that's not the case for me and for some other people when you are confident in your ability and you've met a new opponent you're still going to go you're fast gone. and hard you're not going to be slow you know it, it, i just True. i'm much more of a what is it sekiro uh combat Sekiro. person i want to go yeah. bam, bam 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 you know and if you're slow then you're slow this, but i'm going fast and and this game has that it but i 100 percent agree it doesn't have that with that particular weapon that is just better <laughs> than all of the other weapons that yeah stayed so i gotta game. work my way through yeah. that now that that changes pretty soon but yeah that is that it's is the thing that through. i had too is that like that weapon's pretty rough i will say kind of playing devil's advocate here that weapon does teach you more about how combat interactions work in the game than i feel the faster weapons that are later do would. and that does set you up a little bit more for mm. success but that doesn't make it more enjoyable always yeah. so like sometimes it's better to have the faster weapon i do wish that you almost, instead of doing it as a, because so Nat, for reference, this is a drop off of a, a guy a big boss. that you beat. Okay. Like the first yeah. big boss. And so you beat this boss. Yeah, it's like the first big boss. You get this cool weapon. This weapon is dope for the next like three hours. Okay. Like it's just dope. Out of the and game. if you like slow weighty combat, it's good. It's fine. You're going to have a lot mm -hmm. of fun with this mm -hmm. weapon. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. not a bad weapon. And it's really strong, but but it you're going to run across weaker weapons that are like faster, and you try them on, and you're like, oh, this Ooh, combat this style good. is so fun. Yeah. But you can't warrant using them yet because this other weapon that you got from the boss is so much better. Ugh. And, I don't... And, but once you get past a little bit further into the game and start unlocking more bosses and start doing more things you're gonna run into a variety of interesting unique fast slow different weapons ranged weapons non-range weapons short range weapons quick weapons like daggers dual wielding daggers single daggers they have a chainsaw weapon where it's a great sword but your first like five attacks are instant quick with fire and you like slice across the screen but then every now and then you have like a recharge moment where you have to take a second and yeah. back off and pull the fuck and yank yeah. on the cord to get it going yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's so like cool. there's there's like these really cool things and interesting weapons. But you beat that first boss and you're still learning the game and you have a a, a huge time lag in the next section of the game before you get to some of those other cool weapons for sure Dude, for the, sure so one of the biggest yeah. things is that eric said i think in our last episode that it's like possibly a diablo killer and i can see that there's so many things that are very bro there's nothing to kill I, yeah it's well i i say <laughs> what are you yeah. saying no, no, no. Diablo i say killer. nothing's ever gonna kill diablo 2 for me so like if, when you say diablo killer i'm thinking diablo 2 okay not three okay. and four <laughs> okay that's a joke um okay that's but okay. like path okay. of exile you know like is it gonna is it gonna put them out of business not out of business but you know what i mean well i'm not sure no. okay. i mean the weightiness of the combat is a bit too slow for me but if there's variety that's okay but the v rising combat 
in a Diablo 2 style game I think might be even better than V Rising. I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm gonna and here's the only unfortunate thing for V Rising. I love the idea, I love that developer, I love the combat style. I would agree with you. I have seen Diablo clones with V Rising combat from companies who have done that before, from mini arena style combat companies, from things like um what's that one? It, it, Smash Muck Champions or something like that. There's Smash Muck, yeah. There's there's a bunch of companies who have tried to do Diablo S games with that style of combat. And they this could just be a marketing problem, and all of my worries are null and void, and someday a company will do it and market it correctly and it'll overtake. I agree, that combat's better. I have yet to see a company actually get into the market with it even though there are games you can play with yeah combat styles like that you know, that you know what is missing for me so back to no rest for the wicked it's so close to being monster hunter style combat but you don't have like mm. oh i have the great sword or the hammer it's slow and weighty but i i can do that like charge thing where i'm running around waiting for the opportunity then ba bam you know um, they're okay. kind of missing that a charge up mechanic. A, I'm running around and making your downtime. Have valuable. you unlocked any of the weapon skills yet? Where you hold down and you have like the four spots. Yeah, you have to have focus to yeah. spend it. Yeah, yeah. So those there's a mm -hmm. ton of those, and you can actually go to a crafter in town and like start to yeah. change those out and tweak your play style and there are some like that where you have charge type mechanics and you get to cater your yeah weapon but it's a little weird though because it's like you have to spend mana like. to do it in monster hunter if you have a weapon you can charge it up and and get ready to do, 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 do boom anytime and that feels good but it doesn't feel good when you're like oh i need to drink my potion so that i have enough stuff to do it or i need to earn enough rage basically to use the attack it makes your you, downtime. You do get to engaging. regenerate that mana yeah. based on. Different I know, attacks. but like I. So like during the combat, you regenerate. Yeah, but in Monster that, Hunter, you don't. So you don't does. need to spend a resource to do it. There are other things that you can That's build fair. up to do a more epic thing, which I feel like those are m more suited to more epic things. I'm talking about a basic attack that can be charged up and maybe a bit stronger if you charge it up long enough. Well, you. You do have that too in oh. No Rush for the Wicked because they have charge attacks on the main. They have a they have a sh too. Like they if have you a hold quick down. attack and a yeah the long attack. But the big difference is that you can't you can move hold while doing both it. of those though too. In Monster Hunter, you can move around with your hammer and your sword yeah. while char And it, the thing is, it bridges the gap. Uh, you can't move around. You can't with move your sword. with your sword. Oh right, the sword has charging. to stay still. No, just the hammer. just the hammer. Just yeah, just yeah. so yeah. it's just a thing. I, I I can I can see the connection that you're trying to make in the sense that Hammer's play style makes you feel as if your downtime is just as important as your action yeah. time. So for someone like me, I can use the hammer and then eventually use the great sword because of of how yes. I've developed in the game. But if you give me a great sword first and, for sure. and foremost, it makes it hard for me to want. I'm like. I like the game, but I don't like the slowness here. You're, you're oh man, I think, I think that that comes down yeah. to a player preference because I started yeah. Great Sword, and I was and, like, dude, this is this fucking. Slaps. And now I'm gonna be real. <laughs> when you get that first boss's weapon, you're probably gonna have a lot there's, of fun with no. There's rest. nothing oh, yeah, cooler than sure, killing sure. a big boss and actually getting to use his weapon. For yeah. sure, especially yeah. like I'm hoping to like, I'm hoping to procure a higher end graphics card in the oh, next few months. Oh, you're gonna go repair so your we'll sister's see. computer and 
take it. <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't it. say I wasn't going to. It was yours in the first place. It was mine by Jeez. birthright, and I claim, I claim I what is claim mine. It. I claim oh what is God. mine. Okay, so uh, V Rising sounds interesting. Uh, yeah. Notice for the Wicked sounds interesting too. I would love to try it once I actually get something that can run it right now. I- I, I 100% think we uh, th- that is one thing too the gra- the graphics are gorgeous mm-hmm. but they are also a killer on the graphics card so having a good graphics yeah. card is important right now I saw to, it especially until like, like yeah. V1 when they are yeah. when they have their huge graphic update but yeah. I would be so down to play that I am so excited for the co-op There's update. co-op? That's the whole thing. They're designing this to be a Diablo killer. It has an in-game dungeon <laughs> It has repeatable dungeons. Dude. It has all of these interesting of the mechanics. It, I don't know, Anthony, if you've tr- gotten it. Gotten they've introduced yet, really cool mechanics cool. for building up the war-torn city that you have a base in. Yeah. You have the, oh, go mine or chop some wood, and you bring that back, and you deliver it, and you're like, I want you to improve this part of the city so that I can do blacksmithing. You know, or I want you to give me an elevator yeah. here because I'm tired of running all the way around to get back up there. And and it is really cool. Fair. They do a really good job of, I think, something Eric's described that um, Dark Souls does, where it's like you're going through the world and then suddenly it gives you a perspective on the world. And you're like, oh, I've been there. I can see where I was like because you have the vantage point mm-hmm. and stuff. It's cool. It's that Metroidvania, baby. Yeah, it's really I love that about it. I, I mean, I'm I am definitely super biased. It is. So far, it has been my favorite release of the, the year. Um, it's just... I, favorite I really release of the it. year? Yeah, it, it, it's going to end up being my game of the year. And I... and I know Nat's going to fucking bring out Hades, too. But Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, favorite I release they're both of the early year. Access. They I'll haven't talk. been released. It's okay, y'all. That's exactly. True. That's true. Exactly. That's true. We can't. That's we, fair. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Okay. I, I can see that. Truth. They haven't. Truth. V Rising's the only one point oh. In the year that they release. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe No Rest for the Wicked will release in December, and Hades Two will release in January, and they can both be my favorite game of the oh year. Oh my god. You quick. know that's not That would happening. be very quick. <laughs> Dude, Nat, but, while um, you're working from home tomorrow, maybe check out Rusty's Retirement. Mm. It's a game that sits at like the bottom of your monitor. And you just do like some farm. Oh, yeah. I have seen it's that. It's like so I cool. Have. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I have played it. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it really good? I, so I've been seeing everybody talk about it and everything, but like, what is? Give me the rundown. Like, what is? It's what is this? Just game? super casual farm game, basically, it's with very super, satisfying yeah. like clicky noises when you click on it. It's just a uh, filling your oh, nice. you know extra brain cycles when you're waiting on something or you're talking on the phone with someone or you're in a meeting way to make it sound so attractive there, so you anthony knows job. the the laptop that i have i have the i have uh, i forget what it's called if oh yeah you, you have an extra you screen up, like, the asus rog zephyrus could i like fit it on that bottom it screen spans the entirety of your thing right then yes it, it yes. does well, it's so, so you can width. swap it to any monitor you want i'm actually going to share this uh my screen now because this is one that's very hard to describe you know um so this is just very zoomed in but here you can see they've got the game just at the bottom of their monitor if and you just swap monitors and another cool monitor. thing is if you're someone that has a vertical thing uh or even not, you don't even have to have a vertical one, but you can do a farm that goes on the right or left side of your monitor instead of the bottom. Or sorry, it's only going to go on the right. Oh, sorry. Holy crap. Yeah, it's just a neat little farming game and it's very cute. Um, It's fun to try to, it gets more interesting when you get to the desert farm where things can actually like die and you are like, Ah shit! Like I need to make sure that I have the right amount of robots manning the farm to do this stuff. Um, you know, in the same vein, there's actually a game that y'all might be even more interested in called "The Farmer Was Replaced." This is another game that will help you learn uh, co- how to code, basically, and and get better at it. And you write scripts to tell your robot 
what to do in order to farm your little system. Now that's that's much more of a like mm. I'm actually playing this game. That's a maze. I guess you have to solve mazes and stuff. So that one's interesting too. It's a death thing. Yeah, it's a it's a practice on how to uh, mm -hmm. how to understand a dev of development yeah, cycle. Did you ever play Melvor no. Idol? It's a uh, it, 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 totally different concept. It's dev I definitely like Rusty's retirement better, maybe a little bit. But it, it, Melvor Idol is a popular idol game like this that I I've played a ton. It's RuneScape with no 3D graphics, essentially. So you essentially say, hey, hey, go collect this. And then it'll collect it for a while. And you can do all of these different idle things mm. while it's going on on one of your monitors, essentially. You can do dungeons, battlegrounds, all kinds of stuff. But it was based on RuneScape, so it has a lot of the general RuneScape ideas. You can be like, oh, I want to level up my magic and then you'll go through and do magic things for a while and it'll idle and fight different monsters and stuff like that oh Smart. no stop sorry but yeah like this game's been fun it actually makes me just want more games along the same vein but maybe more city builder-esque and just different styles where it's something that you're building you're architecting a situation it's gonna run itself to, to an extent, but you have to go and do maintenance and it doesn't run itself right away. Automation doesn't come until later. Like, it's a really neat thing that I hope more I'm, more games like this come out, but in different styles. I have an idea. And maybe we cut this out if this idea is too good. I now want a Pokemon-like That's exactly idol. what I thought, too. Pokemon. For sure. This but Pokemon. Dude. Yes, you go through and you say, "Hey, explore this area." My oh, God, Anthony! Anthony. What's happening? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, picture a case where you have a spare monitor and it does, li and then you're like, "Oh, battle this gym," and it like idol battles that gym for a mm. while, and like you can see the Pokemon fights and all that kind of stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. And then you can go, "Oh, I want to catch." flying Pokemon in this area and it goes through and like battles and has some random chance to it and you see get to see the battles so like it's always well, going even on. With, like the there. traditional battling being turn based you could actually still do that because yeah. it'd be a gym manager more than anything than an actual like uh, trainer thing you would now be, they do have be. the gym ma manager I think they have a gym manager idol I think um for it's like a Pokemon like thing, I can't remember what it uh, what it is. It might be a mod for one I'm of the pretty Pokemon sure it's a games. mod for a Pokemon thing because I remember yeah. seeing I remember there being like a thing where you can be a gym leader and yeah. like you manage it on your own. But I think that an idol version of that where like you do the decorations cool of it, you yep. you decide what kind what biomes and then that people you just come in and gym, battle you and, and they get, come like, in and every things. now and then they show up and they fight and they're like hey by the way like i, I where did you get like you see a pokemon that they have you're like hey that's cool where did you get that and then you can go on excursions oh. or whatever you send uh other trainers on excursions to catch stuff for you yeah i mean, I mean cool. yeah i i also am just like what kind of games can we make? This seems so such a fun idea. Like let's just <laughs> let's make some just ADHD game. autism it's friendly game. games for those of us that think way too quickly <laughs> and have to multitask. Dude, for sure, dude. I saw some advice for like ADHD on some sort of like random website, probably like Healthline, and I was like, it's really obvious when someone that has no experience with this whatsoever gives advice because one of the pieces of advice was. Uh, Turn off all TVs, all radios, to limit all distractions, and it's like, no, turn them all on. You want to send me? You want to send me over the freaking brink? <laughs> like you need to compl You want to send me over the it just edge? Immediately okay. gave me flashbacks to the few times in school where I was put in a like terrible, complete isolation situation, like taking the SATs or something, but not that wasn't even isolated. But it's just like, mm. there's not enough noise there's not enough there's not enough Dude. stimuli 
Dude, yeah. I was I was actually yeah. having like a moment the other day where yeah. I was like, I wonder. I probably could have gotten pretty good scores on some of this stuff because I'm one of those people that should have gotten that like extra time and stuff. You're smart. I just, guess what? Yeah, I have dyslexia. I can't read good, so I did terribly on the reading thing. I can't read good. I just got this Here. bottom teeth in my brain. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, but yeah, um, there's some other games I'm looking forward to, but we can move on to something else if y'all want. Yeah. yeah. What are you looking wanna, forward to? I want to play quick, Heartbound quick. Demo someday. Um, there's Block Game, which is boom, like boom, boom. an MMO in Minecraft. Boom, boom, boom. Um, okay. There's Drill okay. Keeper, which boom, boom, boom. I have to click on because I can't remember what that is. Oh, there's Dwarves. It's a roguelike deck building and tower defense game. Which Ooh, that's like yeah, a lot maybe of Maybe I should just share things. the screen on this one because that boom, sounds boom. very interesting. <laughs> but yeah. Drill keeper. And it's got dwarves. Yeah. Yo! Like this looks pretty dang cool. Okay. Oh yeah, it's I making like my skin so crawl. Yeah. Okay. Is this a yes, tower defense? All type three deal? deck building Yo. tower defense. Like, and is it out? This makes my Ugh, this makes to my be brain announced, man. To very be announced. happy. Yeah. TBH? Uh, TBA? Hopefully soon, oh, though. We'll see it in 2028. How could I'm you so do sorry. this to me, Anthony? I'm so sorry. How could you do this to me? How could you show me all this eye candy and then be like, hey, by the way, you can't interact with any of this? You know how immediate I have to be with anything that shows up within my circle no, no, of just, focus. I'll, I'll put it away. Like if I'll I don't, if I don't immediately make a note no, or a no, schedule no. or anything for no. it, it doesn't exist. Like this, wait, wait, this wait, wait, podcast just, right just, now. If I, mean, I didn't have a schedule game, for it, you can download the demo of this game right now. Is, Look at this; it's a stylized two D platformer. Oh, this is kind of cool. It's so pretty. It's a two D platformer. Oh, yeah, oh, oh very yeah. minimal. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, stab stab him. him. What happened? Stab him. I'm not even sure what's going on anymore. Okay. Oh, there's a boss. Me either. What is this? Another is failure. This? Another failure. Oh wow. Okay. I, I do say I do have to say the the Ooh. minimalistic design is always well, look he, they had a so body pretty. and then it For went away. Sure. For sure. It looks like that ha it almost has a what is it uh, like a Skyrim constellation ability. Ooh, the counter though. Ooh, uh, the counter and though. I gotta say, you, you, with gotta... the music, it's so much better. <laughs> oh, this yeah. looks good. So that's worldless, and you can play that okay, at good. least the demo right now. I don't know if the no, you can the buy the game. Demo? You can buy the game. You can buy Anthony? the game. What am I? What is? What this am I? Thirteen? And look, you want me no, to freaking put the released. disc I just Who got from the Xbox well, magazine? It for free. You can try it for free. It's fully released. It's not, it's not even an early access. You're good. Available now. Worldless. Nice. I'm t I'm tired of this candy you keep dangling dangling in front of me without. I'm gonna feeding skip the last anything. game because I don't want to <laughs> die. Um. Finish finish your. Teasers. I'm looking forward to, but my. The 1.0 release that has come out that we have, might have already talked about, which is Sea of Thieves, because you know they paid a bunch of people to play the game. It's on PS5. They have like bombs that you can throw that will raise skeletons on your team. They've got like uh, air bending uh, horn. They've got you know a a shot that shoots four cannonballs at once to do little damage. They've got zip lines that you can walk on and slide down oh you know and and you can create your own zip lines basically with the with the harpoon gun and so it's just it's very curious they've made a lot of changes it, it seems like it might be worth checking out again um but i've seen a little bit of it and it still has a lot of issues in terms of performance like and so that's mm -hmm. why that's the main reason i haven't played the game forever is because with my internet had been pretty spotty the performance was like very rubber bandy speaking of i might be getting fiber in like two to three weeks let's yeah. go dude which let's reminds me of one other you. random thing we are unfortunately going to be having to take down a massive red oak tree it's huge insanely big oh, but y'all made me realize i wonder because we're going to try to use the wood someday 
of what a red oak aged bourbon might be like. Huh? <laughs> hey, if you can make I mean, a you barrel can make out staves of it. out of it. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to send it in to somebody to go ahead yeah. and get it done. Yeah, making yeah. barrels is extremely yeah. Uh, yeah, but man, outside of that, I've just been enjoying the Stanley Cup and Hell's Kitchen. Nice. Good for you, dude. dude. Hell's Kitchen. Oh, always don't, fun to don't, listen to don't. Gordon Ramsay yell at people. There you go. All right. <laughs> now we can talk there about you these go. two. Okay. So I'll I'll start us off because I, and that will take us down into the depths yes, of the labyrinth. Here. Because I have been playing. So a I, lot. <laughs> as you all know from the beginning, I I was sick for a good period of our last break, unfortunately. Which uh, un unfortunately led to not a lot of game playing. So I have mostly played uh, kind of at the beginning of that sickness. I played No Rest for the Wicked, which, as I stated, probably my release of the year. And I'll, I'll color that story a little bit. I, I really enjoy that game. Of course... I'm a huge Elden Ring, Dark Souls fan as well, so I'm one of the games I'm looking forward to is the new Elder Elder Scrolls um, DLC, which I'm super excited to, to go through and play. Of course, I think like things like Noida, like the the, the that style of gameplay mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm, really punishing mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. really enjoyable for me. I am so looking forward to the co-op release of No Rest of the Wicked. I've essentially gotten to the end game where they have this dungeon that you kind of progress through that you can do in a limitless type of way. And it is just visceral and dynamic. And that leads me to what I've been playing the last few days, which of course has been Hades 2. And... To preface all of my thoughts on Hades 2, Supergiant Games is my probably my favorite game developer. The voice lines are pristine. The voice acting is pristine. The music, the art, perfect. Did you know that... Say and it. there are some Say weapons it. and the, so far, I love the world. I love the story. I don't know whether or not I enjoy a few of the weapons. State your situation. State the weapons. So, this is very specifically. So, I've unlocked every weapon except for the staff. And of course, Hades one had different S variation. Stop. Not staff. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Axe. Axe. The axe. I've unlocked okay. everything but the axe. And of How? course, Hades wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, stop. stop. No, I had stop. to stop you Go because on. there because there is a weapon that you cannot have gotten not gotten the axe and gotten this other weapon. I see, I see. So there might be a secret weapon. I don't know about yet. That's fine. Okay. I'm in okay. for that. I'm like I'm in for that. There are others. <laughs> I'm, with you. I'm with you. Okay. Here's okay. the thing. I know Hades 2 is amazing. I, I want to make no doubts about that. Mm. But. But? When you start off the game. So, and I want to compare this to Hades 1. Which again, phenomenal. And everything else about Hades 2 is just better than Hades 1. For sure. When you start Hades 1, you start off with a sword. Correct. The gameplay of the sword is so fun. Correct. In Hades 2, you start off with a staff. Correct. The staff has a number of interesting mechanics that, in my opinion, grind the combat to a halt. Because you have essentially three different uh, uh, buttons that you can press. They have an instant cast and they have a channel cast. Is it cast, channel cast? Yes. 
There is, when you first start out, very little reason to use anything but your main attack if they don't have a shield and one of the high damage hold casts when they do have a shield. And Correct. I've gone up to the third boss in multiple first playthroughs. Third boss being the the uh, well our, our I, buddy. Yes. Okay. Without okay. spoiling everything. Okay. Okay. So, in that case, I have now done that with the first few weapons up to the axe. I haven't gotten the axe yet. <laughs> Every time I play the staff, it doesn't really feel that fun to execute the staff mechanics. True. Every time I play the wands, it doesn't feel that fun to play True. the mechanics. Yes. Every time I play the daggers, I'm like, why didn't they start with start the, with the daggers? daggers. <laughs> could so we could it's we so not true. have just the <laughs> Could we not have just made the daggers the first weapon? <laughs> Why in God's name just did so we decide to start with the the most <sighs> nah. because, because the staff has the most pliability She's a witch. with the She's boons. A... With the boons. I it's understand. the most pliability with the boons. I understand. And I'm with it. And I see the potential. Right. I am so worried that Hades 2 will have two different audiences and they're missing out on a third audience that Hades 1 had. The two audience being people who have played Hades 1, they're going to play through Hades 2. Let's be yeah. real. Hades yeah. 2 is just a better version, more polished, more awesome in almost every way than yeah. Hades 1. For sure. But uh, people, I'm having the problem where there's too many games. <laughs> and it's not even done, dude. It's and it's not, not even done. Even, Look, not even close Hades to Hades 2 done. has more content than Hades 1 did at release in early access. Correct. Look. And I'm not going to lie. I love Supergiant enough to trust them on the staff decision. Trust the process. But if you have a person who doesn't already love Supergiant games or love Hades 1 and they try Hades 2 and they, and they have to the deal staff. with the staff yeah. for the first three hours of the game, fuck that gameplay. So start with the daggers, please. Start with the daggers, yes. Um totally agree. Uh as a as a super giant shill, I fell in love with Hades. I have over six hundred hours into Hades one. Um The staff is very reminiscent of the spear from the original game in the sense that it's not a very interesting game loop. Yeah. Off the top. Agreed. With the, with the daggers, you're dashing around, you're trying to get backstack damage, you've got the nothing personal kid uh, cast that you hold for attack, you can throw a fan of knives. It's just cool, right? It's just freaking cool. It's just fucking cool. And then the staff rolls around and it's like, you can throw fireballs. And it's like, no, you can't. You have to wait for a boon for that. And then it's like, well, yeah. I mean, you like, you can make this right, this like, uh, you can cast and like, it creates a giant lightning space. And it's like, no, you need a boon for that. And just and to be clear, Nat, just to preface the audience. Yeah. You unlock boons on a run basis. So they do not stick. They do right. not. Here's the thing. Right. You don't start the game with every boon. You are right. tailored to a timed release right. of these boons. So the right. boons that make staff fun still don't come out until at way after you have the dagger. I would like to propose 
a counter argument in the sense that there are very few builds once you get into the later ends of the game of Hades that rely solely on the sword. More often than not, it usually goes into their aspects. Look, and right? here's the thing. That is fair. And I concede that at the end of the game, you're going to be tailored towards certain play styles to experience the hardcore difficulties and things like that. Mm -hmm. I still think that the new player experience is so important to Prime yeah. that developers should focus on making the first interactions fun and enjoyable. For sure. And my problem so far, the only problem I have with Hades 2, and it is honestly mute after the first three hours, right? Mm -hmm. Like... The minute you get to hour three, you've unlocked enough boons that like all it's of rolling. the builds are kind of fun. It's, it's kind happening. of rolling. Yeah. But the first three hours with that staff feel meh. And I honestly don't think it takes you three hours to get the daggers. It takes you one moonstone or to go ahead and unlock the weapon. As soon as it shows up. It's like the f main focus of what you're looking at anyway. The only reason I didn't pick it up immediately because I already heard about the axe and I was like, no, I'm saving up for that. But I do agree. There needs to be some form of expedience to offload you from the staff if there is no mod mod uh, modifications you can make to it you'll, early you'll in the game. I just feel like it's so easy to switch the direction. So, like, in my opinion, a fix of this would be, like, oh, Melinoe loves using daggers as a child. She's a very sneaky type of personality. She's the son of Hades. She has that Zagreus touch. And, she's, and the like daggers fighting. are on the freaking title yeah, yeah, yeah. card. Exactly. And so you, you essentially start her with those, and you fix all the problems, and then after you've beaten a few runs... She goes, you're deserving of the staff now. Well, and you're like, you okay, just cool. gave me a, a separate idea because I feel like a similar thing happened to me with No Rest for the Wicked. Why do you have different types of weapons? Often just to support different play styles that different people enjoy. So yeah. why not huh? have at least two or three options out of your vast potential array in the beginning of the game to be like, unlocked already hey, you know this is what you would usually get but do you want to have daggers instead or or would you prefer to be a ranged person you know like i'm so glad you reminded me of this too because i meant to say this when we were talking about no rest for the wicked i so wish that when you beat that first boss that was a quest not even a quest but the townsperson rewarded you with a legend like a, a like a legendary weapon that you get you get to use yeah. for a while or maybe you had to trade it in maybe because you still then, got the sword but you had to they were like oh you know i could give you this you could trade if you it would in like to give else. me yeah. your sword yeah yeah anything like that so that you have some agency on saying your play style oh mm. i really didn't like the great sword i i want to use this weapon instead and essentially giving you a beginner weapon that you get to use until you un start unlocking the, the cooler weapons later in the game. And mm -hmm. it could just be like the base play styles because the the dual daggers are freaking insanely they fast are and no rest they for the it. wicked. They are it. Yeah. They are they feel like a starter weapon. Dude, that the the daggers Actually, are just no. They don't feel like a Hades starter 2. weapon. Let me switch back and forth a lot. Let me be let me be clear. clear. In Hades 2 the daggers do not feel like a starter weapon because they are so because they are so strong against the weapon strong. against the weapon uh, types that are in the game. Yeah, they are. They do not feel like starter weapons. That they being said, the staff so does not. Fun. The staff does not feel like it is. It, it does not feel strong enough in its game style that we would like we would make more time for it. I could I could possibly see them doing something with the cast function with the staff that makes it just even better. 
I think it I'm might okay also. I think it also. Uh, so many of these weapons rely on you getting a Daedalus hammer and modifying how they work. Like oh, I don't know if you. I don't know if you've but that gotten was the into case this in the first game too. For sure, but I don't know if you've gotten to this. But like the daggers don't get good unless you have something that revolves around the cat the uh the special if you don't have something that's relating to the special and dealing with crowd control they it's really hard to take your runs past the third boss hey i and here's the thing i am i can totally understand that yeah my critique is not with what is best just to be clear okay I like if if you're telling me things get better, they do after certain unlocks and stuff like that. I'm like, cool. I trust Super Giant in that regard. Right. I think my biggest problem is that the daggers base form when I roll out in the first level with one upgrade felt so freaking cool that I was like, did I really just waste? To however many, mm-hmm. however much time, it doesn't even matter how much time the staff took. If it was one run and then I unlocked the daggers, I'd still be upset. You'd be this. question, you'd be right? questionable about because it. Because yeah. the staff, no matter what, is just not fun until you have certain boons, and you don't unlock Zeus until like run seven or whatever it is, run eight. No, you unlock him in run one because he's no. one of the he's one of the. Uh, pre-generated people after Poseidon. I don't think so. I think it's you know, set for the first five runs and you don't get story wise it sounds that. like you would also have a bigger impact of like, oh, I've finally been reunited with my staff and now you're ready to fully mm. unlock its potential. But that's what I was saying too is like if you just had the case where you started with the daggers and then the main girl that you're training under is a witch who uses a staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she doesn't use the staff either. Uh, she's a witch, though. Like she does magic. Uh, if she were like, here's my old staff or something. Or you like, like find that, it in the know? dungeon. Like there right? are points in the story. Yeah, I mean there are a number of ways you could do it. I don't want to spoil anything, but there are a number of story beats. There's something that where you could do. It with would that. make a lot of sense for her to be like, you deserve a staff now. But there's also, I will say, Eric. There are certain systems that are existent in this game right now that did not exist in Hades that could greatly uh, change how the weapons react because we don't even know if we're doing aspects with these. Agreed, we don't, agreed. And, and we, don't, we also but, don't know how the first few runs are supposed to go with this tooled properly. It could be that the daggers are over-tooled. Look, and I, I, again, I just want to state, from a longevity perspective, I have no issues with Hades For sure, too, for sure. Right? That is not my issue. It is literally, my only concern is, and, and this is me nitpicking to such a degree, is uh-huh. that I'm one of those people, I'm a super giant advocate. I want everybody to pick up Hades 2 and be like, this is the game. I've told all right? my coworkers to play it. Right? And so, I want play video this games. game I'm to like, succeed please. so badly because of how much potential and how awesome it is mm-hmm. once you get into it. So I want the new player experience to be so good that you start this game and you have no issues with it. For sure. And I that that to me in my head just highlights that can we do anything to the staff to make it so that new players start this game and they're hooked out the gate because I don't know if the staff is doing enough right So, now. on that note, can I bring up something that I've been curious about and I wonder what you guys, how you guys feel about it. I scrolled down and I yeah. saw $30 and No Rest for the Wicked is $40. They're both early access and this makes me feel a little weird because I thought early access was like oh you know you are gonna go and beta test and qa test basically our game you're gonna check it out early you're gonna buy it at a discounted price but it's not like the full game maybe you pay more later or something like that i'm surprised to see them so high and you've heard me i don't remember you've heard my oh you say that it's like as if it's fully out 
I judge a game based on its merit when I play yeah. it. I am a developer. I know about bugs. I know about issues. And so, if you release an early access game and there are bugs, but the game at its core is good, I judge it based on the, the potential and whether it's good and what you do with that going forward. If you're fixing those things and making it continuously better and the idea and the core concepts are good, I judge you based on that. And you mm -hmm. can be a 10 out of 10 game with mistakes. Right? For sure. And so and Super, Gi Super Giant has like a great history in terms of utilizing the early access yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for this model of game. But for me, this applies to every game. If I go and I buy it, and I don't care about what price it is or anything like that. I look at it. I'm buying Hades 2 for $30. Is this a $30 experience right now? If no, this is overpriced. Yeah, well, like these are now, luckily for Hades 2, it's definitely worth $30. It's worth $30. Like, what about no rest for the wicked? For this particular case, is it worth 40 bucks? No rest for the wicked. I think so. It is better yeah. than a lot of forty dollars games. But that's, games so, but that's that I've so ever interesting played. to me because I've never seen an early access game for more than twenty bucks. That's fair. And here's the thing, and this is why I think people should speak with their money in this regard and stop considering early access, uh, 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 like a detriment. A, a, not a detriment, but a thing that truly represents what the game is. Because it's going, here's the thing. What's to stop in 10 years from every company releasing a game one year early, calling it early access and charging the full price for it and not delivering on the thing that they do in the last year to actually make it worth that price? If we don't buy an early access game and judge it on its merit, at the time when it's released, then you or some companies will start enforcing this ideology that you don't have to finish a game. You don't have to make it good. You don't have to make it all that it can be. You can half-ass it, release it early, and get all the money that you would. Well, luckily, doesn't Steam have certain policies in place in order to protect the, the gamers? Where, like, when you release your game, if the gamers find bugs and things that prevent them from being able to play it, you have to fix those. Like, you don't get to just leave that. Like, didn't that happen to Valheim? So, not that I have seen in. I thought that happened to Valheim. Very well. It happened to... So, the Valheim case, as far as I know, was more developer-centric and not Steam-enforced, but I'm not 100% on that. But I can tell you with certainty that there are other games that I have had that have been in early access for five plus years and have not updated full stop at all since releasing in early access and have not been penalized or lost any of the sales that they had from that time period as well. So I don't know that it is enforced enough or at least to the degree where I would consider that a it's early access Steam will do something so I'm okay, right? I still think the the people that are buying these things should buy it, try it, play it, and then make their decision on its merit. Then so if I sold an early access the game for that they have. 10 bucks, would y'all be upset if when I have finished it, I sold it for 20 bucks and the people that bought early access, they already have access to the game because they supported me early? No. No. You would not be upset? No. no. I, would I wouldn't be upset, upset over that. And the but reason we are, we are is, not the typical gamer, I don't think. But well, no. the, the other thing is that, again, I think you should judge something based off of the value that you put into it when you put it in. So if you sell it at a discount because you're saying, hey, this is not the full experience. This is 50% of the experience. And then you go in and you give me an experience that is 50% of $20 because you're like, hey, this is a $10 experience. I am basing the merit of that experience off of what I put into it. I'm basing it on what it is at that moment. It's so in time. weird that we're in like an age of like no expansions. 
Like, what if you released yeah. No Rest for the Wicked in four parts, almost like an epic movie, show, movie, and the first part was 10 bucks. And if you want to keep going, part two is another 10 bucks. And then once you get to part four, you have spent 40 bucks overall. They probably make less money overall, I bet, statistically, and that's probably where it gets yeah. from messy. You also have some companies that do that. Well, the DLC is that ideology now well too. dlc you do is, have some companies that are doing DLC it in the is so East, different from though? like an some... expansion you know like when diablo 2 came out with the expansion or when starcraft 2 came out with it, it with its expansions it was like oh man this is huge like this is a big deal well, i don't know if i agree though i i think it's variable though right like you have for example a good a good good recent example is phantom liberty or cyberpunk 2077 I mean, that's bigger than the entirety of the main game, and it's just a DLC. Yeah. Right? And you, so you but do have me, some examples like, of that I, still being the th case. This might they be a unique a thing for me, but when Monster Hunter World Iceborne was coming out, I was like, ooh, this is a big deal. But when you come out with the DLC, instead of calling it like an expansion, it just feels so different to me. That may be just a marketing thing. I, I do think there are examples where you're entirely right, but I also think you have some examples that are coming out that are just expansions. They have just renamed them as DLC in today's culture. A good example being Phantom Liberty or the new Elden Scrolls. Elder. Or Elden Scrolls. Elder Ring expand. Elder, Elder, Elder Ring Elden DLC. Ring? Elder Ring DLC is like two times the size. <laughs> Elden Ring, God, darn it! Every you iteration, struggled really I'm, I struggled. I struggled. We're coming to yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, of this, yeah, boys. it's okay. It's I'm so okay. Wrap it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The new <laughs> Elden Ring DLC is like twice the size of the base game. It's like huge, right? And it's just a DLC. So, I think there, are, there, are, it just depends on the company and how they market it and what they call it. But I think from now on, DLC is going to encompass all of them. And DLC is an umbrella term that also includes expansions inside of it now. Like, I don't think you're ever going to see something called an expansion at a marketing level again. It's always going to be a DLC. And some of them will just happen to be the scale of an expansion that we knew of growing up. Yeah. Nat, what have you been up to? <laughs> Damn. Even play. Hades 2. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing so much Hades 2. What am I, how many hours am I at right now? I've been playing an absurd amount of Hades 2, to be fair. Well, actually, I can't say an absurd amount because I I literally don't have time to do anything other than like come home and decompress from the day. But I have played a total of 23 hours of Hades 2. Oh, man. it's It, it rounds up when I look so, at you. 23? Mine's 23 hours. hours. 23.8 hours. Yeah, 23.8 hours. Okay. I'm only at I'm only at three and a half so far. So as somebody who's may have been in it longer than you have and has seen like the breadth of it, I honestly like the novel breath of fresh air that the staff brings. Just because it is it can do anything. Hey. Again, it can for go the people either listening. way. The staff's only a problem for the first few runs. For sure. It, for sure. Get, it does get better. Like, Nat is not blowing steam. Even I'm in the. Not. I'm even not. Even yeah. it's just those first two to three hours that the staff is rough. And once you get like a good boon, you're like, I see the potential here. Also, one thing that the game really needs to work on is expressly describing things in detail of like, hey, to power this up, you need to do X or you need to do Y because I didn't know that you could increase your grasp, which is the number of Arcana cards that you can have on one run by using a currency that is something that you gather through the entire game. So I didn't realize that, you know, that green little ghost looking icon you spend that to get grasp yeah but did did you okay so if i you didn't know go into that top. menu for uh -huh. the first little bit of that game 
it pops up a thing the first time when you get close to but your grasp you don't, limit. But you don't have exactly when you no, get no, no, close no. to your grasp limit, right? No, no, right. no. But Go right ahead. at the beginning, the uh -huh. first time you get to your grasp limit, it pops up a dialog box. That dialog box tells you that information. If you skip that dialog box and keep pressing A, it shows up every single time until you say, don't show up again. So what so, you're telling me is that I'm a spammy little boy. <laughs> you spammed and never read that dialogue box, or you said ignore this dialogue box. Oh my box. god! I you had just press ignore. I was like, I know what I'm doing. I'm a season. You had two options there because oh. that dialogue box literally. Here's the thing: I did like the first few runs, and then I got to the the limit, and then. It kept showing that dialogue box and I kept skipping it, not uh -huh. reading it. And then uh -huh. I kept doing it, I kept doing it. And then finally I'm like, okay, what is this dialogue box and how do I get it to <laughs> stop showing up? So I read through it and I was like, oh, oh cool. that's important. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I am deep into this game already. Um, I've already made my first full run all the way down to the big bad. Um, I have not defeated them yet um i'm still wondering where the uh because i was midway through the fight and i was like dude i'm doing like zero damage like i, I mean i'm i'm doing damage but like i am the level of the level of focus that i'm i thought that i needed was not where i was where i was supposed to be like i am so it, excited to see the speed run for this to see how they cheese uh, uh, like the second layer in the, uh, in the first run in the first run because so i got to the second boss on my on first, first run. run okay the first layer is probably objectively just easier than the first layer in hades one in my opinion I would say yes. And then the second layer has some scaling weirdness to it. It doesn't scale linearly. So I beat the first run, no problem. Uh, the, the first layer on my first run, like it was a cakewalk. It, Did it didn't you even... realize that you can unlock those the little uh, spaces that had chains on them by trying to unseal them? what do you mean in the in the second in the second biome yeah when you are going to the doors yeah and some of them are wrapped in chain oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no 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 i'm just talking about purely from a monster health perspective oh okay okay the okay, damage okay. scaling is so it's you absurd. finish the first level yeah. first run <laughs> you get to the second layer and there's some big boys in there. There's some you, thickums. You, the, like, <laughs> what the time it took me to kill like the first boss was the time it took me just to damage all of the enemies in room one. Correct. Because you're not supposed to be there without a certain boon. Oh, sorry, a yeah. certain arcana. Yeah. And so it feels really interesting how the scaling is designed in such a way that mm. it's designed so that you don't get to the first the second layer on your first run you can't so you can it's just a measure in patience it's the worst honestly because oh no i was like i'm getting to this <laughs> and then the second layer took You're... me like an hour on my first Most did you get to the third run no uh, okay, because I was about to say, yeah. if you got to the third on your first run, there's you, would get be, a, you would get checked. <laughs> yeah, there has to be some way to cheese the, the second boss on the first run that speedrunners will figure out. But when you um, get there, you just do no damage to them. And like, yeah, the problem is, if you don't have any speed upgrades, dodging them is also a nightmare. And so mm. they just chip me away faster than I could chip them away. I was like... I was there for a long time dodging my little heart out, but there's not much you can do unless you have some sort of, at least in the first run. Once mm -hmm. you get to later runs, you'll have enough damage to where it, it like but the before, second. Before it's just not. Yeah, it's not but even before the case. that, it's just like a nightmare. 
I yeah. was like, what are we what are we doing? But all that to say, the game's fantastic. Um, it is. I have nothing bad to say about this game. It is my favorite thing to do as of right now, uh, even outside of writing music, which I've been trying to get back into. Um, it is it is not perfect, obviously, but it is it is polished enough that I am so excited for what they're going to do for this fu- for the future of this game. I can't okay. see them fumbling this. I, I'm I, so excited to uh, just to kind of when when you play Hades one, you have a path mm-hmm. and you go through said path, right. and that's kind of the game, right? And you you do that path, right? In Hades two, they tease at least two other paths, and I have yet to do Not any of two them. others. There's just one other. You tell me what the river means at some point, then, sir. What at the beginning of the game? There are three oh, paths no, out no, no. of the beginning. Not three. That's enough. That's the that's that like the back room that they had for um in the first game whenever they had like an office okay i don't okay. think that's a, i don't think that's a portal have, if it have is you unlocked it yet i have not ah <laughs> uh, you don't know you don't know you don't know there could be three paths there could, there could be, be there could three, be three. paths honestly i would be what i don't know where else they would go though i mean like it would just be an express trip down that's the beauty of it maybe it's an express trip down or I don't know. I would have to. I would have to think about the, that. I more. don't know. But there's definitely two. There's yeah. definitely two. I'm at the stage right yeah. now where there's where it's like, hey, you need to get another place. By the yeah. way, so yeah. And that that in and of itself is is super exciting because I think one of the things that like I played a lot of Hades, not as much as Nat has, but I, I've played a good bit of Hades. And one of the things that would keep me from coming back is the excitement of having some other run mm-hmm. to be able to do something that, it, like, for example, Binding of Isaac is a good example of this. In Binding of Isaac, you have multiple different paths or options that change your experience throughout the run entirely. And Hades one had that just a tiny bit but mostly mm-hmm. it was the interaction yeah. that you're changing not the path right but i am excited that hades 2 has a path change at least in prospect so far yeah and i think that uh the idea of having heat runs from last game is something that i'm th- that they're approaching differently for this game. Every single time that do they do a game, they do something different. So I have yeah. to assume that the sequel is not going to be an immediate copy of the previous. So yeah. I'm just I'm just excited for whatever they do after this. I'm I'm I want to kill time, uh, as the tagline prescribes. And when I do it, I want to see what they're going to try and have me discover throughout this entire story like because because a lot of it is also storyline like you want to know yeah. why wh- why is this why is this all happening like yeah why is, what happened between the end of hades one and hades and 2? this it's like it's just a complete question because so, we are stuff. in the dark completely in the dark so i'm stoked yeah. we don't even, we don't know where our boy is we don't know where we our don't know anything dad is. because last we know spoilers for hades one they're kind of just living happily ever after. Ever after, yep. Ah, and yeah. now shit's all done, messed up. All sorts of fucky wucky. So, but I, I guess with that, if you have nothing else, I got nothing else, man. Just that game. Anthony, all all hearts and minds clear. Yeah, man. I, I'm pristine, dog. Okay. Well, I guess that concludes. Another wonderful episode of the Tap Haven Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe down in the Jubilee Do. We do have a wonderful um, little link for Riverside that gives us a kickback. If you like the way this podcast is going, I do think that the editing for Riverside has been mostly pretty good outside of a few um, exceptions and hiccups. But 
at least in terms of audio and video quality, it has been wonderful. Fantastic. And thanks again for everybody viewing all this stuff. I think we are almost at 100,000 uh, views. We're closing in on that. I think we're at like 80 get. something thousand. We're Let's get almost 75 subscribers. Oh! Uh, so, you know. You 75 people. Yes. You are so wonderful. I love you. <laughs> Although uh, much less are the people who probably make it to the ends of our episodes. Although I know some people do. And with that, well, we'll catch you in the Bye. next one. Bye. Bye.